Um, I don't know if I should stop the singing. Someone posted that they didn't like that I sing, but it's who I am. It's really hard to change who you are when you do these kind of lives, right? But I guess um, maybe I'm not for everybody, but it's all good. Oopsie, I can't not do it. I sing, it's, it's what I do. I'm excited, I'm full of joy. So good morning, um, are we ready? This is gonna be so much fun. This class is going to be so much fun. Are you loving it? I felt like it's like a doodle bug day and what is doodle bug? is full of cuteness. So I put on some uh, donut earrings. And uh, even though I know it's almost November, I'm totally rocking an orange uh, summer top because, because I can and I'm in the basement, right? So I can do it. Um, but I love orange, so I thought this is this is perfect for our colorful doodle bug cute and crafty day. We are going to work on seven layouts. And I'm gonna tell you right now, here's, here's what my plan is. We're gonna do the paper uh, cutting together. We're gonna to do the mixed media background. I'm going to um, help you organize all your bits, but I'm not gonna embellish this whole kit. And here's the thing, if there's anybody out there who wants to purchase this when it's all cut and ready to go, um, whoever emails me first at vickybootonkits at gmail.com, um, you can have this kit because I don't need two of them, right? So uh, if you ordered Fernwood or whatever, I can throw it in with that. But uh, the Doodle Bug class sat there in my shop for a long time and then I made samples and then it went crazy, right? Is this being recorded? 100%. Um, even though I go live, anytime I go live on... Um, YouTube or even when I do Facebook, it's always recorded after the fact, okay? So yes, this collection was, when I opened it, uh, like I loved it, but I also love the company that is Doodlebug and the owners and the family and the people who work there. So um, I like to step away from using my own product all the time and use something that uh, makes me excited to craft. And then I thought, because I'm excited to craft and I only purchased a few of these kits and I, if you're not following already, you wanna join the Vicky Booten Creative Community, cause sometimes I'll throw it out there like, oh my goodness, I just saw this collection, I love it. Um, is anyone interested? And I'll just like put together a kit, like what I would use, put it together and sell a few of those and then just do classes like this because I think it's fun. So uh, when I opened it, then I was like, oh my goodness, this, what am I gonna do with all of this stuff? And as I sat through and started playing with it, uh, I love the seven, seven single page layouts I made. You can, and because it all matches, don't worry that it's not a double page layout. All the colors match, so you can put it in your album. if you are one of those people who have a hard time with breaking out of double page layouts. It's all the same product. So you can just pretend that my singles are double page, okay? So, um, but I will post uh, still photos of all of these on the Vicky Boot and Creative community. When we're done, I'll go up and take pictures and post them. And I will explain all the details and how it's done, but this is how today is going to go. We have some mixed media to do. These are the Distress Ink colors that I use, and I actually used Oxide for this because I thought um, I love the milkiness of it um, on this background, which this is probably, this is a total Vicky kind of page. But you will see, I totally went the rainbow route, and a lot of these stickers are kind of meant for a planner, but look at how fun this is when we sprinkle this all over this layout. So, um, cause I was looking going, how, I love these stickers, but it's kind of hard unless you group things that are little like that. So here are the Distress Ink colors that I'm using, okay? Kitsch Flamingo, which is close, Tim. It's close to the pink, but Vicky still needs this kind of pink. A Barbie pink and I really think you should call it like that something fashion doll pink or something but um, I love it kitsch flamingo 
oxide. If you have regular distress, it's fine. It just will look um, a little deeper when it dries, okay? But, okay, Kitsch Flamingo, Mustard Seed, okay? Favorite yellow. I have, like, this is when you ask about colors that you need to collect of distress, I always say all of them, but start with, like, things that you find in all of the crafts that you do, right? If you are more into earthier colors, then you'll go into an earthier palette, but you know I'm rainbow. Twisted Citron, okay? I'm not looking at the right camera, so if I look like I'm off in space, that's why. Twisted Citron. And then the turquoise wasn't exactly the color, but I think these two will be good. I might have used uh, what the Robin Egg one, that robin egg color as well but i'm not sure um selvage patina and broken china are the two that we're going to kind of use together with that you need a paintbrush and then i like a nice round brush this one is a number eight so number eight or ten is definitely something you should add to your um stash if you don't have it you need these right um peacock feather would be perfect color uh i tried it um, it was a little dark, but sure, if you want to use that. I did not use Peacock Feather because uh, you'll see, right? It, this, like, look at this, parts of this, do you see? Have a gray blue to it, but whatever you have works, right? Um, a cup of water, and then you. my delivery system is going to be the paintbrush and a sheet of plastic. I'm going to mix on this and then drip it on. It's going to be a lot of dripping and drying. So that is going to take a little while. Like that step will take a bit. Um, heat gun will be helpful if you have one. Speckled egg, thank you. Um, I think I started with speckled egg and then it was a little gray and that's when I went in with the selvage patina on top and then the two worked. Art crayons can be fun too. Sure they can. Use whatever you have. It's just uh, you'll have to do a little blending to get the colors that you need but they'll work. They just will be a little deeper. This is kind of very, um, the colors in this collection are very specific, but you can definitely do it just with a little mixing and diluting. So yes, heat gun will be helpful if you have one. I am doing this on a sheet of foundations paper. If you have cardstock, it will work as well, but just know this is a fairly wet technique. So um, you just need to be careful. Okay, um, and then I'm gonna go through everything. We're gonna paper cut. So we, is everybody okay if we do the mixed media first so that it can dry and then um, we can come back to that page. So if you have the pieces that you need, I think the mixed media will be what I'd like to start with. And then we'll do the paper cutting and then we will kind of just be layering it all over and blending and doing our things. The only thing I won't be doing, because these ephemera packs, if you have both of them, are freaking huge. They are awesome. We have 187 pieces and 85 pieces. So one of those things that I think is super helpful is get yourself um, like a plate or a bowl and put your things in. When you get to assembling, I take and separate all of my ephemera. So I'll put like things together. So like with the titles, there is a whole, I, I freaking love these ephemera packs. And here's a funny thing. I, I'm going to tell you a little funny thing. So like I said, I love Doodlebug. They're my friends. Like I love the owners of Doodlebug. And I remember back in the day, I was like, you need an ephemera pack. Like it is the thing that is the most bang for your buck. The thing I will buy, even if I don't buy the rest of the collection, you need an ephemera pack. And then um, the next year they came out with an ephemera pack and they knocked it out of their park, the park. So like I said, you can't go wrong. So you will want to separate, like see when you look on the back, so I put everything that looks like this together. I put all of the um, handwritten titles together. So I find it's super helpful when you're trying to search for that certain piece that you do that. It's the same with this, for sure on this one. Like you have a whole bunch of twine. You have a whole bunch of 
um, jars of glitter. You have paint tubes. Like all of it is tools. So before you start to embellish, you will want to separate. It's how I did it. I, I went, and this will probably take you a little bit. There are 187 pieces and some of them are this big. So um, a key for success, a golden nugget that I'm sharing with you right now is before you get started, separate all of these into like pieces, okay? And then paper clip them together or put them in separate bowls. Muffin tin is a great idea, yep. So you will want to separate those things. It will make it so you aren't cursing me and doodle bug and cute and crafty. We don't want that, okay? So I am very, very excited to be spending this Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, Monday, whatever it is in your part of the world. Uh, do we have any questions before we get started? Um, I'm gonna flip the camera. So because this is just on uh, YouTube and I'm not using the streaming surface, surface, streaming service I normally use, I'm gonna flip the camera. Um, so we're gonna Blair Witch for a second. I'm gonna jiggle you around. I'm gonna flip it and then um, we'll get started, okay? Uh, so I will look, cause I have all of your comments. Is that corny? Smile for a pick. <laughs> I'm a weirdo, right? So, um, yeah, I'm going to flip the camera around. All of your comments I can see on the laptop. And then uh, if you have any questions, now's the time to put it. And it's super helpful that I learned from uh, uh, scrapbooking cards, Crop and Create. Catherine, I'm sure, or some maybe if it wasn't Catherine, somebody put question and then your question, because you'll see it's sometimes fast and furious, and the amazing part about this community, which some people love and some people don't, is the connection and the chatter that's going on. So um, it makes it super helpful for me when I just peek over at the uh, comments while we're going, is if I see question, I know that I need to answer it. And as you see, my trusty sidekick, Natalie, is here, D'Souza. Um, she may be helping with that as well if she sticks around because she certainly doesn't have to. She has other things I'm sure she's working on as well. And thank you. Hi, Tina. I love when you um, comment, if it's the only comment you post today other than questions, if you let me know you're watching, you tell me where you're watching from. Um, it's super um, awesome. So I'm not in this kind of virtual world all by myself. And the other thing, thank you already for the thumbs up on the video. It helps people find us. For me, it's certainly not a um, a popularity thing or whatever. Like those are just added bonuses, but it helps people who maybe are looking for something to do creatively in a community like this, helps us find it on the YouTubes. And one last thing before we get started, um, when this is all done, I would love if you still went in on the regular part of the video, like at the bottom where you put your comments and comment there. Again, where you're watching from, what your favorite part of the class was, what you'd love to see in upcoming classes that are free or in like a, a paid subscription sign up kind of version because that super helps me as well. And I have to show you this. If you join me on Friday night, so we talked about this before we get started. And this is what we did this Friday night on Friday Night Live. And I have to say, I was right there with you guys and wasn't loving it at first. It was not my favorite, but I didn't give up. And look at where it came to and ended up. So check that out on um, my YouTube video. And then look for my new passion, Slimline Cards. I whipped another background up and discovered a next te another technique that we're going to be doing in that. So... And did you see, I forget who it was, but somebody did one and made it Christmas balls. If you're out there, that was freaking awesome. I love that. So yay, let's flip the camera around and let's get started. And I'm gonna run through what you need and I'm gonna show you what we're making today. So let's do the things. Like I said, I gotta Blair Witch you for a second. So, eek, and not hang up, right? So I hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, it is beautiful here in Southern Ontario, Canada today. My daughter is going to the pumpkin patch and I'm a little on the jelly side. I haven't done that in a very long time with COVID days too, right? So I think we're good and centered. We can see all the things, right? You're in the Booten house. 
So um, be prepared as well, my friends, because no one has seen me in this house yet that um, people are going to come and talk to us. But like I said, this is, if I wanted it all perfect, we would just do it filmed. But because it's live and you're in my house, I can't guarantee what's going to happen. And we just go with it. <laughs> okay? Yay! And sorry, the singing. Mm. Can't help it. I feel joy, 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 and I have to express it. So what do, what are we drinking first off? Oh my goodness, and Karen, your teapot. I have to come back to the Netherlands, um, but I do have my Dutch tea, and this morning it is Pickwick. I love Pickwick tea, and I have tea that's called Autumn Storm in my good morning mug. Coffee and a liter of water. I love it. Dang it, now I want the whole cute and crafty line. You know what? And I didn't put any of my links on here, but I think you can still, if you follow any of my older um, share sale links, I think uh, Cherry on Top still has it online. Just water here. Love it. Coffee. Finish mine. Hi, Debbie. How are you? Okay. So before we get started, any questions? Any questions? The sound is good. We're all good. Okay. So let's go through the things. Beautiful day here in Oshawa. Good. And are the leaves beautiful up that way? I need to go for a drive because our leaves have not changed. And go get it, girl. Jen, I love it. Jen has Baileys in her coffee. You do you. I'm totally down for that. Isn't it crazy how they... Oh, that was another thing. Okay, so no questions at this point. So let's go over what we're going to be doing. So we're going to do the background for this layout which I absolutely love this one. There's a major delay, so I want to make sure. Oh, you know what? I think it freezes. I'm not sure, but I think everything's good. You can see this, right? Yeah, Cute and Crafty um, will be a super popular anywhere that they are carrying it. It is a very, very sweet line. So we're going to do the background on this one. Okay, and then look at. I thought this was fun if you go to crops or get together with your friends to craft. So I did scrapbooking friends and then all the little paint bottles and then just mixed like hello girls. Um, look at the potato chips because we have snacks. So and lots of pop dots. You need lots of pop dots. So this is one of the layouts we'll be doing. I thought it would be fun. I love to mix. And so people who bought the kit from me. I did do the um, a 4x4 because it's kind of perfect for this to break it down into a grid to use all the little pieces. So this is, I'm going to take pictures of myself in my craft room while I'm working because we never think to do that, right? So we can take pictures of our projects, our craft room, whatever. So I set this one up to look like it's my craft table. And then we can put the little sprinkles and stuff on it. And look at my tools, tools, and then my printer. And then I wrote a fake note, <laughs> put the hello sticker, cut a little piece of uh, cardstock out, put a slit in the printer and slid it in. And then down here, look at Patty, perfect for you today. A little journal. So um, if you guys are into journaling, so that's the front side. And then the back side is... Uh, retreat weekend retreat so if you do if you don't go to crops or whatever you can switch that out right just don't put the title there and add more photos but then that's the back side of that one okay and then I love this one so it is um, we're gonna make little mini pol Polaroids and then I just realized I didn't grab black cardstock but we'll talk about the sizes you need for this because I just cut out a piece of white cardstock and then layered black in it to make it look like a Polaroid and then this is kind of photo themed but you could put any photos on here at all so your puppy dog right Irene um, your grandkids pictures of yourself anything can go on here it does not have to be craft related so I thought that would be fun and then I put my little doodle pop there which I love and I could have seven million of these seven million love it and then this one is super fun, Crafting Memories. And then we're going to do this kind of whole layered bit on the side. So like I said, it this is these are going to take you 
um, a while to finish all of the things, right? Because to put, do the work, it's just, it's worth it. But their embellishments are small in here and there's lots of layers and um, glue dots, not glue dots. What am I talking about? I never use a glue dot. Uh, lots of foam dots, okay? So very fun and you can put photos in here. You can switch these up. There's lots of paper and pieces left over and you can do whatever you want. But that is another one and the washi tape. And then look at, can you see those? I put all the little hearts from the mini sprinkles on the washi tape hearts. I love this. You bought a whole bunch of the Polaroid Doodle Pops? I bet, I love them. And then I think this is the last one. I love grids. And then this is a grid on a grid paper. So it makes lining it up super easy. And it says handmade weekend. So whatever, let's craft. Uh, preserving memories. There's another little journal for Patty. Some like, and these are just random. You can add whatever you want, but it's what I had left over. And can I show you something, friends? This, this. So we did all of that stuff. When you're done, all of this is still left over. Seriously. So you could probably do quite a few more. I'm not lying. Look at all of that. If you're into sewing, you can switch any of this out. But that is all still left over from what I did. Seriously. Mind-blowing, right? Yay! So that's what we're doing. And um, I'm going to talk you through uh, the paper that we're using so you can get it organized. So if you have the collection pack, grab it now and we'll put our paper in order that we will cut it. And then we're going to, I'm going to show you everything we're using. So maybe you're not playing along and you want to shop. I'll start with that. All the paper that I used in this was out of the collection pack. I just bought the collection pack and then the embellishments to go on top of it. Okay. So I want to um, go through the order that we're going to cut paper. So you can open that pack up, put it in order, get your stuff organized, and then we'll do the mixed media bit. Okay. So the first paper that we are going to be using, this is a sticker sheet that's in it. You can set that aside. I will not be pulling one sticker off of here, but I will let you know um, what I used and where I found it. You have gonna have so much left over in this. It's seriously super awesome. Oh, and here, take a screenshot of this right now if you can. And I will also add my little cutting diagram to um, Vicki Booten Creative Community as well. But this is what we're going to be doing, all right? And I'm gonna go through all of it with you. But like I said, this video is completely recorded so you can come back and look at any of this, okay? Yay! So, first paper, perfectly plaid. So grab this one and you will see, I'm only going to be using this side of it. We are going to cut two four by 12 strips out of it and cut those apart and then you'll still have a four by 12 left over. Like I said, lots left over to use all of those other pieces and customize and switch out anything that you want, okay? You know mine is just a suggestion, do whatever you want. Look how adorable this paper is. Like you all, you need anything that's like this, always order like two or three because like look it, you can cut these apart and then you have another embellishment. I'm not using any of these though, okay? So this one is perfectly plaid. I'm going to take it and flip it. The next one that we will cut is so cute. So cute. With the little sewing machines on it. I love that. So grab that one or whatever. If you guys, I saw somebody's using their Halloween collection. So just grab something that is like this. That is, I'm only using the plaid side. Okay. So it's for matting. So just grab something that is similar and um, kind of rusty eye pattern. So even if you're not using cute and crafty and you're going to follow along just for the patterns, grab your paper and uh, just find something similar is perfect. The next one is colorful, colorful canvas and it is this uh, green stripe. And the other side I absolutely adore is the paint splats. So this one is called colorful canvas 
And then <clears throat> the pink one is called Pretty in Pink, and it's a pink dot. That's all I'm using is the pink dot. The other side is this torn washi tape. It's beautiful. I'm not using that. You can do whatever you like. But there's a lot going on on a lot of these layouts, so I just went with um, some rusty eye patterns. So this one, again, is Pretty in Pink. I love this. Um, so this one is a uh, craft in color, which is a rainbow, bold rainbow stripe. So we need to, when we get to this paper, you want to be um, very cautious in how you cut it because we're going to cut strips that run this way because we're going to use a pink piece and the green and blue. So you want to be ca uh, cautious of cutting this. Told you, welcome to the booting house. So there's nobody here to answer this. So just a second, friends. Hello? They hung up. Okay. Oh, yes. You know, like I said, you're in my house. This is what we get, right? So this one is a uh, craft in color. The other side of it is, these are the kind of papers that I love to buy are tone on tone, uh, hearts, stars, anything like this, because it makes, it's a little bit more interesting than just using cardstock, right? So we're going to be using that. And then this one is Love This, which you know, I love everything. Love this one. So Love This is this tiny uh, little heart. And the other side is this beautiful plaid. So you need that one. Some of these we're going to just be cutting out um, backgrounds, right? But you need that one. And then these are your bases, right? So this one's going to be layered on here, but these are our base pieces. Oh my goodness. I need a whole case of this. I need a whole case of this. So this is Bright Ideas. And then we have this plaid is cute as a button. So that is the other another base, right? These two are gonna go together. And then last, you will need um, Cute and Crafty, okay? So this is what you're going to be using. So if you want to grab those and put them in order, you'll be all set. And then these I didn't use. So you have some bonus pieces in here. So I didn't use Painted Posies. I didn't use Happy Thoughts. And look at, like it's awesome. But you have lots left over so you can do whatever you want with it. And this Cut Apart uh, Precious Posies. Beautiful. I didn't use these, right? I bought a ton of the notebook paper. I, I'm going to get in touch with them and see if they at least still have open stock of that paper left. And I will be right there with you and say to them, hey, can I get a couple paper packs of that? So I'm just going to clip it together, set this aside, and you need to grab... Oh, the other thing you need is two sheets of yellow cardstock. So um, I don't even know if these match, but I don't even care. I just grabbed out of my stash. So this one is African Daisy. They are both African Daisy. Um, what I put in the um, kit is a little deeper, but I was just grabbing what I had, right? So um, you need two sheets of yellow cardstock. So we'll put that in my stack. And let's get started with the mixed media. So I'm just going to set all of my things aside. And this is what we're prepping. So like I said, I have a sheet of foundations paper. I have a sheet of plastic because it's how I'm going to mix my ink and deliver it. I have a cup of water. And I have somewhere my paintbrush. And again, this is going to be my color palette. I'm going to start with the pink go into the yellow, go into the green, and then the blues. Because you want to make sure you don't make mud, right? So pink and yellow will make a pretty salmon-y color. Yellow and green will make a more citrusy um, yellow-green combo. And then this will just make a turquoise-y color. So you want to put it in an order like that. Uh, any questions before we get started? The other thing that I have plugged in behind me is my heat gun, just for time's sake. 
If you're watching this after the fact, you certainly don't have to dry it. But uh, because we're layering, and I'm going to give you a golden nugget right now with mixed media and trying to build pattern, is if you dry between the layers, you get beautiful depth. If you try to do wet on wet on wet, you don't get beautiful depth. You just get a wet mess, okay? So that is the magical part about doing this, is literally we're gonna do a little kissing, a little dripping. We'll put the pink down, we'll dry it a bit, we'll put the yellow down, we'll dry it a bit, we'll splash some more on there and just start building, right? This um, makes my heart happy. And this is the simplest, if this is all you ever do, entering the world of mixed media and with your scrapbooking, card making and crafting, you're winning. Like this, mastering this is just a great way to add interest underneath your layers instead of just using plain pattern paper or cardstock. So let's get started. So I'm gonna start with my pink. So you can have a smaller sheet of plastic too. If I can find one, it might be easier to manage. So let me just look. Oh. I have one right here, right? And look at what it's cut out of foundations paper, the cover of my foundations paper sheet. So um, we do that sheet of plastic on there with intention. When foundations first came out, I asked for, I said, I would really love a sheet of um, acrylic on the front, right? So that we can uh, use it, reuse it instead of just throwing everything away. So I'm going to use this smaller piece and I can mix on this one as well. So just open up. And again, I'm using Oxide because I love the milkiness of it um, for this background. It's very soft and pastel-y. And I feel like it goes perfectly with Cute and Crafty. Question. Oh, so Debbie, your question's already answered because I am doing the mixed media. I'm just going to clean this and make sure I don't have other colors on it because you know how I roll, right? Anything could be on here. And I don't want to dirty my colors up. So just give it a wipe, make sure we're good, okay? So I'm going to take this and just kiss it to my background. You don't need a ton. This is a workable amount to build in layers, right? Workable amount to build in layers. So you can use a water bottle, or you can use, if Vicky can find, I lost my paintbrush. Instead of looking for an hour for it, I'm going to get up and get another one. No one should be surprised by that fact. Here's another one. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to start blending it with water. So you want to make sure this water is going to move around. It here is your biggest thing when you're doing mixed media with wet techniques is if this isn't flowing around, you're going to put it down and you'll get the square of distress ink you just put down on your plastic. So do you see how wet that is? It moves. There's movement, but not so much movement that I can't control it. Like when I flip this, a little bit might drip off, but for the most part, it's contained. I'm not gonna rinse my brush because I can still use those for the taps, okay? So you can even, if you want to, drip it just to get it started. And when you go to kiss it, don't kiss it like it's the rock, kiss it like it's your frail grandma. You love grandma and you wanna give her a kiss and a hug, but you don't wanna crush her, okay? So this just means that you can control your placement. See, I'm deliberately putting that pink on. And you have to make sure you don't overwork this because we still need to get yellow, green, and the blue on here, okay? Remember, pink, yellow, green, and blue. And do you see how it snakes across the page? And the other thing, do not be surprised if maybe when you get um, your mats cut that you might go, ooh, I don't have enough green over to the left. And that's okay, you just come back and add some more, okay? So um, I'm gonna put a couple of drips on here just to start this layer. And what are we gonna do now? We're gonna dry it. So even if you need to break it up a little, just tap your paintbrush. Don't paint your paintbrush in there, but maybe just tap the color around a little bit. 
just so you can push. Maybe it all pooled in one area. And we're gonna give this a little blast with the heat gun so we can build our first layer. And now we'll build the depth of the pink on top of it. Okay? You're doing great. Oops, I just threw my um, extension cord across the room. Just a sec. Oh, Vicki, you're not doing great. Just a sec, friends. Sorry about that. And I should probably plug my laptop in while we're at it. Everybody's good? I know you're working away so it gets quiet, but then I always worry when no one comments that I'm here by myself. Okay, here we go. Yay, hi, Rosalind, how are you? So nice when I get to see friends that I haven't seen for a while, because a lot of you guys, uh, may watch the lives and stuff after the fact, right? Because you have lives, you're doing your thing. Um, I love when you check in with me. Because it is one of those things. This is funny, when I started, I've been doing lives and these online classes for a long time. But I think people forget out there too sometimes that I'm just this girl over here uh, crafting. And even though I craft with my friends, it's still really nice when people check in and chat with me. I do love it, I read it, and you warm my heart. And I love if you're new and you say, hey, this is my first time and I'm loving it, or it's nice. Because I'll tell you, the one thing people have no problem on <laughs> is to jump on and tell you what you don't do right. Um, and I laugh, I'm like, well, guess what? You have lots of other options. If I'm not your cup of tea, just watch a different video, right? I'm all right with it, it's not, going to make me sad if uh, you don't enjoy it and you want to go elsewhere, right? Go for it. So I'm going to, I didn't even put more ink on. I'm just going to kiss a little bit more of that in here. Okay. And this watered down, see the boys are home here in my part of the world. They went to hockey this morning because it is a thing. The other thing that's fun that you can do is take clean water and tap it into those solid areas of pink and watch what will happen. So we can break that up where we're adding pigment, but we can also take pigment away, right? So now watch what I'm gonna do. Take my paper towel and we'll lift some of that as well. Look at the depth we just created just by taking it away as well, okay? And there's no reason you can't come back and add color and take color away. So as we start building, you might go in and go, oh, I want a little bit more pink. Then go for it and add the pink. To be honest with you too, friends, um, I think I used Kitsch Flamingo and something else here. You know what else I think is in here? Let me look. As I'm looking at that color, I wonder if I use Spun Sugar too. It's either Spun Sugar or some Worn Lipstick. I bet you it's my favoriteest pink. I think I put a little bit of this in here too. I'm gonna test it just so um, you guys can see. But I do, I think I put a little bit of that in there. So look, I'm gonna go in with a little Worn Lipstick. You don't have to get up and get this or I'm just gonna throw it on there, I just wanna see. Yeah, I think I did put a little bit of this in here too. So I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna add some worn lipstick and you can do it or you don't have to right but i just want to see with that color and see how that's a lot and that's going to be hard to control so what i will do is take some of it away and just build a little bit of that pink in there not much because i don't know i don't know if i did this or not friends i don't know if i'm gonna use that Let's see if it's a sponge sugar. Be good if I made notes, but I get so excited as I'm working away. No, it can't be. I must have only used the uh, Kitsch Flamingo. Isn't that crazy? Because I'm looking at it going, why does the color look so different? Maybe it is this. Let me try. Maybe it is sponge sugar. Hi, how are you, hockey boy? Yep, sponge sugar. That's the color, okay? That I'm going to blend a little bit of spun sugar in there. See the uh, peachiness of that pink? So I'm gonna throw some of that on there. Live and learn, right? Love it. 
tap some color in here and then we can move on to the next color. But I do, I love that sponge sugar. Do you have that color, guys? I don't even know, like, what is your collection of Distress Ink like? Do you have a lot of Distress Ink colors? Or just a little bit? I am telling you, friends, this is 100% the thing I would tell you to invest in is uh, Distress Ink. I love it. I love that um, it is such a versatile ink, but for me, 100% is because um, I can do lots of techniques with it. If you have it, use it. If you don't, don't worry about it. This color will still completely work. I was just trying to figure out why I ended up getting this kind of different color. So do you see with Oxide, because it is a combo ink, that look at the beautiful layers that you get. You have almost a full set of oxides. Me too. And what's funny is I realize I've lost some of my regular distress. So uh, I'm just taking out that extra water. And I'm going to go in one more time and just go in and add some drips of clean water on here just to break that solid pink line up. And then we will move on. I won't dry it. I'm just going to lift it. And we'll move on to the next color. There we go. And do you see now some pretty pink going on there? And now I'll move on to the next color. I can always revisit the pink. But now I'm definitely going in. It is mustard seed. So now if you're like, see, she doesn't know what she's talking about. <laughs> I do know that I use mustard seed. And I'm going to place the mustard seed right about here. The green's going to go here and here. And then the turquoise blue down here. So do the same thing with your mustard seed. One good squish of pigment. I'm gonna go in and you're gonna blend it with lots of water because you don't want it to be too bold. You can start with a couple taps if you want to. You're gonna blend it right into that color and it's all gonna go right about here. Not off the page. I'm gonna leave white here, but I'm gonna blend it right in. Right. Again, buckle your plastic. You can even do this and let it run around. You can tap with your paintbrush. You want it to blend into that pink a little bit so it's not just a block of pink and a block of yellow. And then I will go in and fake it, my little drips. Sorry to get quiet a little bit too as I'm working away here. And don't forget, we can break this up after we dry it, dry it first. Don't try to tip or uh, drip the water in yet. You will dry it and then go back and can revisit with a little bit of the water. So whoever um, ends up asking if they did want to buy this kit, if one of you, you're getting this too. I'm sending whatever I work on today is going to go in that kit. Okay. So I'm gonna set this up a bit. This one was really wet. So what I'll do is just start to dry it and then I'm gonna pick some of that pigment up with my paper towel. And you will get some buckling in your page as you're drying, uh, but don't worry. You uh, just set this underneath a stack of uh, layouts, books, cardstock, something like that. And what you can do after is flatten it out. Or if you're like me and I have my mink, I can totally run this through my mink, which I will for whoever's getting this one. 
And now I'm gonna go in, dry it a little bit more. We're not baking it like a cookie. We're just trying to get some of that excess moisture out so we can layer on here. Okay, and now I'm gonna go in and I wanna lift some of that pigment so we know this is water reactive ink and what makes it magical. And I can now eat pattern into it. So do you see? I just put water drops of clean water onto this and now we'll just pick it up. And then that starts to take away and it's also adding to our depth. So I don't know if it shows on the camera but it is watered down so it won't have like, um, and it's yellow, so it won't have a ton of effect, but it does work. I'm gonna dry that a little bit and we'll add a little bit of color on top to build a darker layer and we'll move on to our next color. Very good, any questions so far? Is anyone brand new to using um, Distress in this manner? or to doing painted backgrounds. So I do love the kind of diluted look of just like this pale yellow with no more ink on here. I'm just using what was already on here and I'll just kiss that in. And as the moisture leaves, that's when these can get really interesting too, right? Is just getting those last little dots off of your sheet. And then I will Clean up and I'm going to put just a little bit more yellow and do some taps and drips and we'll move on to the green. It's your first time using your art crayons. I love it. Kind of new to card making and my heat gun is not high powered enough and need a recommendation of Watts or um, one like Vicky's here. Does Michael sell them? Yes, they do, Shelly. And which heat gun do you have? Do you have uh, the little white one? the, what is it called, heat it tool. I have a number of um, heat guns. Like this one is really is more for um, embossing, <laughs> but I'm lazy and it's just the one that's here and I grabbed it. The little white one, the heat it tool is actually better for drying this because it's not blowing as much, it's just putting heat out. But I have this one and the, I have, I think like four embossing and heating tools, right? And welcome, yes, I saw Color Outside the Line, Amy, is brand new. I'm very happy to have you here. Thanks. I'm glad you found us. But yes, okay, so now I'm going to take, I put a little bit more yellow, right, so it's nice and bold, and I'm going to just drip some on here just to have some darker bits. And we can also do one of my favorite things is some drips and splats. you just get a little bit bigger. And if you get a lot of the tiny ones, just connect some of them, right? All I'm doing is going in and connecting some dots, okay? And I'm not even gonna dry this one just yet. I'm gonna go right into my green. So clean off your yellow. You don't want to cross-contaminate your oxides. With Distress, you can kind of blend between them, but with your oxides, um, you want to use each color and clean up. Oh, we're gonna have so much fun, Cindy, with the Fernwood collection. So if you're new here, just this weekend, I put up on Friday um, my next class, which is a whole weekend class using my latest collection with American Crafts, it's called Fernwood. So that kit uh, just went for sale. You will have a whole weekend crafting with me in that one and um, a bonus class. Plus we do a great uh, community. So we have a Facebook page and we um, can hang out. That's where a lot of these ladies have become friends and guys, because we have guys at craft as well. Um, and uh, it's a lot of fun. So if you want to check that out, it's on vickybooten.com. And uh, I can't wait. And then we still have warm wishes to come, right? Our whole Christmas weekend. So there's a lot of crafting in our future. It's gonna be good. Okay, so I'm just see now going in a little bit with intention into my yellow with the Twisted Citron. Tap, tap, don't paint, tap, tap. 
because I want these to look like they are um, just kind of fell onto the page. Okay. Do you even notice how I hold my paintbrush? Because I feel like if I hold it like this, sometimes if I hold it like this, it's a little looser and it's not as forced. So I want to put a couple of them over here too because we know our mat's going to go here. I want to make sure that there's space outside of where our title goes. So I'm just going to add that there and then we'll go and kiss it. Okay. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yes, and you can do these things. If you're brand new to this, you know I will tell you, yes, you can do it. 100% you can learn mixed media. And just keep hanging out with me. Do you know I do, like every Friday we get together and craft. And guess what I do every Friday? I teach you how to use the mixed media and do artful techniques. And I love that I have a lot of people who maybe just kind of watch because it was fun, something fun to do on a Friday night, but didn't play and now are full in, full in drinking the mixed media Kool-Aid, enjoying it. So um, if you think you can't do it, I think you can. It just takes a little bit of practice and play. Look how fun this is turning out though, right friends? And you can do this on anything, okay? Heat gun. I love it. An all Vicky Booten day making warm wishes cards. So much fun. So you see with the oxides, what's magic with this, when we add the water to them, you will get some surprise colors. Like look how much yellow just came out of Twisted Citron. Right? It kind of separated into some yellows. So I apologize upstairs for the noise. It makes me think I didn't use Twisted Citron on this. I'm just going to put that out there. Because see how it's separated into a lot of yellow. So let's see as we go through which green could bring us a little bit of, well, it's not bad. But it pulled a lot of yellow. See how it separated into a lot of yellow? So let's see what else we could add into this. Because this is like just kind of learn as you go sometimes, right? Oh, I know. I'm going to put a... Let's try a little cracked pistachio maybe. No. Maybe. You could. I wrote the colors down somewhere, but I don't know what I did with it. But now I'm looking at my greens and going, I don't think it could be anything else. But we, let's just put a little bit of it in there. I'm just going to let me test. And we'll do a little bit of cracked pistachio in with our twisted citron. I just want to pull a little bit more green because there is a lot of yellow in that. You do not have to do this if you don't want to. But I am going to put, this is one of my favorite Distress Ink colors too, I have to say. Yeah, I'm going to pull a little cracked pistachio in there. Just to balance out the yellow in the Twisted Citron. Because it is 100% Twisted Citron. It's very yellowish, right? So I um, am finding the cracked pistachio is balancing that out a bit. So I'm just going to keep working with that one again. Okay. Um, I don't think, well, Lon, you could try it, but I'm liking this. Like, it is, like, you think on here, if we're using it wet with an ink blending tool is very much like this. When we add water to it, it is not. It is pulling a lot more green. So, um, yeah, I don't even know. Because, like, look how green that is. It did not separate into the yellows. It's very crazy. Very crazy, but do you see how much yellow was in the Twisted Citron? Let's see. Now is the testing time, right? Maybe mowed lawn. I don't even know where mine is. Maybe you are right. Mowed lawn. Let's try it. I'll try it. Let me test it on mine, and we'll see what we get, okay? 
I can hear Riley is down here. Let's try it. Oh, I like it. Let's go with that. I like it. Good call. Watch when you're tapping too, that you're not getting it on the cat, the dog, and on your shirt. And I'm going to commit. Okay. Yes, I agree with you. I am liking it. Because that other one, the Twisted Citron, very yellowy. So I will make sure as well that I go and adjust in the description for people for after the fact. With a little bit of that mowed, mowed lawn. Because it's Twisted Citron pulled a lot of yellow. But yes, I am liking it. Good call. Let's see? Look. Mowed lawn. And I bet you when I did this the first time that I tested it, and um, it's good. Now, it won't hurt if you add it after the fact, because what you get is just uh, a nice um, layered look. But I do want to commit to a little bit more green to break up that yellow. Now I'm kissing it like it's the rock. Okay. Very good. So let's dry that. And what we're going to do is add some water, okay? I just got mowed lawn uh, last week. Yes, I love it. It's a great color. Yellow in water may be a problem. No, it's not the yellow in my water. This is 100% uh, when you wet it. All of these distract um, oxide inks, because of the uh, type of ink it will, is, will separate. The colors will separate when you add water, right? So that definitely greened it up. I'm take a little bit out. And you see how, as it dries, look at the chalkiness you get, which makes the um, oxide is awesome sauce. And so it looked really deep, right, as we were going, but totally love the color we're getting. I will put some of the clean water drops on. And we're good. Yay. So see, just go in now and add some water drops. Hi, Rye. How are you? Good. Okay. And now I will lift that with my paper towel. Okay. So just let it sit. The longer you let it marinate, the more uh, pigment it's going to pick up. And then let's see what we get. Oh, I love it. And it's showing some of the turquoise from the other color underneath. Very fun. I'm going to go through with some more water. I love how that softens the oxides up. Oops, I'm flinging it all over. If I had a cat, the cat would have just got it in the face. Okay, pick it up. Hello, Kelly, how are you? Okay, we have one more color left, and then we can set this aside to dry. Very good. Okay, so let's go in with our blue. And I'm going to start with this selvage patina. Love it. That color is amazing. Very pretty. Again, we'll just put some drips on to start. And this is just gonna fit in this bottom area, right? Because our mats are gonna go here. I'll tap some up into my green. And then we'll commit right here. My green went a little bit lower on here, but it's all good. Okay.
very, very pretty color. And do you notice too, when you're tapping your pigment in, it will start to reactivate that other green. So see what I'm doing is I'm picking that moisture up. I'm gonna clean my sheet off and I'm gonna add fresh in one more layer. You added peeled paint, lovely. Was it dark? What did you get there, Sarah? How dark is it? Because you will notice that oxides, the colors are completely different than their um, sisters or brothers, the distress. So I'm putting some taps on. I'm moving it away from me because I'm gonna get it all over me as we start working at the bottom of the page. And then let's put some more of the fresh salvage patina. And then guess what I'm gonna do right now? Just a little, little, little bit of broken china right at the bottom. Okay, just a little, little, little bit. Oh, it's beautiful. So let's tap some of that in. And kiss that just to the bottom or even drip it on. And do you see it works in your favor to just work in small sections? There we go. Lovely. So we're going to dry this. We're going to put some water marking in it and we're done the uh, mixed media background. Which color is that? That was Broken China. The last two I used were Selvage Patina and Broken China. So definitely now I am loving this. not to put my boob in that I almost did it's recorded Cindy no worries I'm live but um, when we're done this you can come back and watch 20 million times if you wanted to okay so yes all of the lives anytime I do a live is always recorded so look at the beautiful depth that's coming in there with those two colors beautiful I won't bake it right like a cookie i will lift some of that pigment off because see how dark that is watch what happens take some of that out and we have almost that reverse marking in the pigment and now let's put some clean water on here and i did not change my water it's fine these colors are um, not going to create a lot of mud see look at my water cup not bad at all right still fairly clean so we'll get in there like i said the longer it sits the more watermarking you will get so i might do that again because i jumped the gun And I am going to not touch this now. I'll let it just sit with that water on there and dry. Oh, I'm going to touch it down here a little bit. Okay, I'm going to set that aside now. That is it for our painted background. Okay, using Distress Oxides. And this is the background that I used. The one I did is a little bolder. I probably worked it a little bit longer, but still very pretty, okay? Again, the colors in whatever combination that you wanna use are sponge sugar. I added this one after, Kitsch Flamingo, mustard seed. We switched our green from Twisted Citron to Mowed Lawn, Selvage Patina, and Broken China. You can use combinations of these if you want with the cracked pistachio and the um, twisted citron, but I'd have to say, I like the mode lawn. So we are done with the messy parts of this. Any questions, friends? How did that go for you if you were playing along? 
I'm sure you might have got a little frustrated with me because I switched colors out, but it is okay. Let that go. Like, look at I used all the colors on mine and it turned out just fine. Okay? So get rid of your water so you don't spill it on you later. Clean up. And we are going to start the paper cutting. I think we're good, right? Any questions that I missed? Unplugging my heat gun. I'm happy, no mud. Excellent, Carmen, excellent. Um, if it is way darker, just use less pigment next time. You do not lead, need a lot of color. Uh, the Distress inks have a little bit more opacity, um, opacity to them. So meaning that not as much light goes through, not as transparent or translucent. So um, I think that it's a good idea that you use, like practice the technique and use less ink, more water. It's always when you're doing anything that's water technique is you need to play with more water, less water, more pigment, less pigment, and uh, just play around till you get it, right? Explain the water marking. These distress ink, so not every ink will do this, but they are water reactive. They're very magical. Um, so when you put taps of clean water into it, it will remove it because it is a water reactive ink. So it never will set. I could go on to uh, something I've created a week later and tap water on it and I will lift pigment. Not as much as when it's wet. And don't forget these are diluted water color uh, version of Distress ink, so you won't get uh, as um, distinct and bold water marking as you would if I would ink it with like an ink blending tool and then put water onto it. You will get, because there's way more pigment placed and it's full pigment without any uh, water dilution in it. I bought the Cutter B scissors you recommended for fussy cutting, amazing, 100%. Any of these little scissors are great for fussy cutting and especially the ones that have the coating um, and the little tips. But yes, the Cutter Bees the, with the black um, scissors are excellent for fussy cutting. Uh, okay, any questions before we get started? And then we will move on to question. As we go, can you show us each finished page? So for those of us using a different paper pack, we can see what we need to accommodate for? Um, kind of, but Catherine, I'm using it on, um, like commit to one paper that's similar, but I'm using the same paper, could be on four layouts, right? So, uh, and you can always go back and recut a piece. So I will show you the layouts as we get started. So this is what we're gonna start doing. We're gonna cut the yellow mat. We're gonna cut the plaid. I'm also using that plaid here, right? As long as your papers match, like whatever you're using. So say I saw somebody's using the Halloween collection. Um, if it's a plaid, you want a plaid or a stripe. If it's a polka dot, you want a polka dot or some kind of small pattern. If it's a floral, you want anything that is just kind of, if it's a solid tone on tone, you want a tone on tone. If it is a um, bold pattern, you want a bold pattern. Pattern mixing won't matter as long as like, if it's one that's using all the colors, you want something probably similar that uses all the colors that tie your collection together, okay? So as we cut, I'll talk about that. But like even here, you don't have to, you, you could use any combination of paper as long as you have, um, like this could be cardstock on the back if you wanted to. And then this does not have to be patterned. It could work just as beautifully with a um, piece of cardstock. And then I just had the green that ties the colors together, okay? And then here, I just love the linear aspect. I feel like this one looks like it's all sitting on my uh, cutting mat or something. So the look of that. And then again, it's just um, solid tone on tones with something that ties your color in. This one will not matter. It's going to be more your base that matters. 
This one will not matter, right? So we'll be good. You're gonna find that it will be, it will work very well. So let's grab the papers we're cutting. I have my cutting diagram. And if you have them, it might be handy to have some paper clips because you can clip your cut pieces so you don't lose them as we go. So you know I always have them handy. This is one of my favorite tools is uh, paper clips. Okay, let's have a little drink. Okay, let's get started. So I'm gonna start with Perfectly Plaid. I have my paper trimmer. Okay, you're gonna cut out of it two four by 12 strips. So I don't usually cut my barcodes off until I have to. So I'm just gonna go in and cut two four by 12 strips. So four inches and four inches. Okay, two four by 12s. Guess what we're cutting out of this? Four by four inch pieces. So I'm not even gonna get, I'm gonna stack them. It all depends if your paper trimmer will cut too deep. But if not, you want to cut four by four squares out of all these pieces, okay? So four by fours. So I cut two four by 12 strips, and now I have one, two, three, four, six squares, okay? There you go. So sometimes when I do my cutting, I will flip. I don't need it for this time, but I will flip the B side so if I'm looking when we're doing a class, I'll know where to find it. This doesn't matter because we are only um, using the plaid side. So I just cut six four by fours out of it and I'm gonna set it aside. And then that is bonus to make cards or whatever you want to do. I would love a pair of uh, Bermuda shorts in this as well, or a dress. Wouldn't a really fun dress be nice out of this for the summertime with a nice yellow cardi? I would love it. See, Doodlebug needs to make fabric. Are we good with that? So you ended up with six four by fours. And if you literally, here's, here's, um, the one thing that I want to talk to you guys about when you're doing classes with me, paper cutting is the hardest part. I always do it. We do it together. We cut everything before we get started because it's just easier. Um, a tip for success and everybody out there who's done this with me before, are you ready for it? Just give over and follow my directions. Don't try to think about what you're cutting. Listen to the number and then just cut it because I've taught thousands of people in classes and the math is the hardest part because all of our brains com compute it differently like um, we all will take a 12 by 12 and cut it differently so when you are doing cutting with me I always say it's like a Borg mentality if you guys watch Star Trek that we have a collective brain and you will have way less stress if you just give over and do what I tell you and it's not because I'm being bossy. I always say I'm your scrapbook Yoda, right? I'm just your guide in this. But um, you will find the paper cutting. You will fall behind if you start trying to think about it. Don't think about it. I'm saying the numbers like 12 times. Literally just do exactly what I'm doing. So I hope that makes it a little... Um, if you find that you get stressed out in classes, that's why I always cut all the paper together instead of cut and build because I think that's a nightmare. That's a nightmare in a class setting. Like in right now, right? There's 250 people watching. It can get a little tricky, right? When everybody um, thinks differently. So guess what? This one's super easy. We're using this one, which is a nice white a linear plaid. You could use a stripe for this one if you wanted to. But you just want something that is super simple because they're going to be mats. And we are going to cut another 4x12 strip out of it and cut 4x4s. So super easy. The math and the paper cutting is not hard in this. So I'm going to cut a four by 12, turn it 
So when you read my instructions, it's always in one sentence. It will say, trim a four by 12 strip from the top of the page, comma, turn it and cut uh, three four by four mats. So there's four by four, four by four, and a four by four. And we're done with that paper. This is all bonus. You can do whatever you want with this after, right? This makes great mats for um, matting your cards. Like this is great for cards. So you know what's fun, friends? We're going to have enough left over from this that you could totally go in and make some cards. All you need is like card bases or card stock, right? So throw that over there. And then the next paper is Colorful Canvas, which is this green stripe with this beautiful paint drip. The other thing I always recommend too when you're paper cutting is always look at side A and side B. So if you are one of those ones that goes into a class setting, opens your kits up and you cut all the barcodes off, I would say don't do that. One, you won't know which paper it is because how would you know this is colorful canvas, right? It's not like back in the day where it would say popcorn and there'd be photo of popcorn on it. You'd know exactly what it is. And this is also the way I always control how you cut the paper because then I can tell you the top of the page is opposite the barcode, so you'll know, okay? So you are going to cut, to start, two strips. They're two and a half inches. So two, two and a half by 12 inch strips. So throw that on your paper trimmer, find the two and a half inch mark, and trim a 12 inch strip, and do it twice, two and a half, by 12, and you need two of them. Okay, while your paper is still in the trimmer, let's cut the third piece. So the other strip that you need is a four and a half by 12. I know Patty will love this green. I know that that's her favorite color. So this piece again is a four and a half by 12. Okay. You're just gonna take this, turn it, and cut a half inch off of one end. The finished size is gonna be 11 and a half. So I'll just turn it and cut half inch off. My four and a half finished is four and a half by 11 and a half. Four and a half by 11 and a half. This is extra, we don't need it. I'll set it in my extra pile. So if you didn't catch this, this strip is four and a half by 11 and a half, it's done. And then we have our two, two and a half by 12 strips. Guess what we're cutting out of it? Two and a half inch squares. So you need to cut four of them out of one strip and one out of the other. So two and a half by two and a half. These are gonna be little mats on that one that I said, oh, look, it all looks like it's sitting on my craft mat. So it's just little photos. And here is the tip for some of my friends who only ever use four and a half or four by six photos. A great app that I shared in my photography class that I taught uh, for a month, it was a month long class. A great app is called Print to Size. And if you go in that app, you can literally put um, a whole bunch of two by two photos on a four by six mat and then print it out of your photo printer at home. And if you are newer to following me and you have access to it and it's getting closer now to Black Friday, so start watching for it. You really want to add the Epson Picture Mate 400 to your tools. It is the best um portable photo printer it uses ink and I know a lot of you are selfie lovers I'm going to tell you if you test it you will never go back it is I think the best little printer and they look like um photo quality like you had them at a photo lab they're excellent uh photos out of that one you don't need the little strip okay and uh, my favorite photo paper, whenever it's back in stock, because it's been out of stock forever, it's probably COVID delay related, is Staples brand. Write this down. You will not regret purchasing it. Staples brand Photo Supreme Satin. So it has a, um, 
there's not much of a shine, but there's a little bit, and I love it. I never print high gloss. I don't like gloss photos. You get fingerprints on them. They're impossible to photograph if you do want to share your projects. But a Staples brand Photo Supreme Satin, best photo paper, okay? So um, one more out of this other strip, two and a half by two and a half. I don't need this. That was it. Okay, so when you're done, you need five two and a half by two and a half squares. I know you guys, my European friends, and I know you can't get it in uh, New Zealand or Australia either. I'm sorry, because it is really awesome. If you ever come to visit, buy it and put it in your suitcase. Seriously, you will not regret it. It is the best, best printer. I love it. Um... So that's it for that one, okay? We're done that paper. So that one was Colorful Canvas. Our next one is, and you'll find we're cutting hardly anything. All of the magic is gonna be in the embellishment on these. So this paper here now is called Pretty in Pink. So again, if you're doing Halloween, a black dot or an orange dot would be perfect. Uh, Picture Mate 520. Is it brand new, Amy? I will order one and I'll let y'all do a whole review of it. If there's a new Picture Mate, is it small? Is it a brand new one? Because if it is, I will go and look for that right now and order it. So someone remind me of that. Um, and I'll do a whole test for all of us because, um, because this is my job. I love trying all of the new things. So I will look that one up. If the Picture Mate 520 is new, I to it's been out for a year or so, I haven't seen it. I will buy one and I'll let you know what my thoughts are on it. Um, because I do, I love my picture mate. I love it, best purchase ever. So now guess what we need out of this one? A two and a half by 12 inch strip, one of them, that's it, okay? Two and a half by 12. And out of your two and a half by 12, cut four two and a half inch squares. Four two and a half inch squares. Well, you will find, you know, I've had it for years and I love it. And it is definitely every, I don't, I have not met anyone who has purchased that and said they didn't like it. Some have had some trouble that we've had to help troubleshoot, but it is an excellent printer. So four two and a half by two and a halves out of something that is uh, going to be great for a mat. And I will throw that in there. We have just a couple more pieces of paper to cut and we can get to it, but you will find you guys love those layouts. This is not hard paper cutting so far, right? And we have lots, lots left over. And I, I made seven layouts. Look at what you have left over. You can totally go and make a whole bunch of cards or tags or um, embellishments for your projects. Like this would be fun to make little tiny embellishments that you could put on other projects. You just ordered the Staples paper. You will not regret it. Have you used it yet? It is amazing paper, but you have to get the satin finish. It's key. So good, so good. Okay, this is the trickier one. We're gonna be cutting out of the sides of this paper. So I will cut my barcode off on this one. This paper is called Craft and In Color. Craft In Color, and we are using both sides of this one, okay? So um, go ahead and cut your barcode off, and then we are gonna cut a piece out of each side. Or you could cut them in a row, it doesn't matter. So I'll cut my barcode off. And then when you make your cut, make sure you're cutting through the rainbow, not just like a strip of the reds and pinks. So make sure it goes in your trimmer. So you're cutting out of the side of the paper and you need to trim a four and a half by 12 and a five and a half by 12. A four and a half and a five and a half. Four and a half, 
and a five and a half. And that is something that is beautiful and can be used later on your homework. Oh, Laura, get that picture made out. And I'm going to put up, I, I have to rejig it a little bit, but I'm going to put my photography class back up. Um, so if it's something like it's a great Christmas gift, right? I don't, I didn't charge much for that class at all. I don't know. What was it? 60, 70 Canadian. And it is literally, uh, for any of you guys who took it out there, let our friends know. It's a great thing. I, I talked to you about the printer. I talked to you about using your iPhone and all the settings in it. And there's tons of great tips on taking better photos. I'm going to just, uh, fix it up. And I'm going to put it up because I taught that one um, live as well, like it was a live class. But if you want some help with your uh, photography, um, it I'm, I'll put it up. I'll put it up and it's a great thing. And I'm also going to be putting up um, access to the gel plate two, our part de class that's going to take place probably in February or March. Um, so I'll put that up as well. So I just think they're great things. So if your son comes along and says, mom, what can I get you for Christmas? You can be like, oh, I would love this Vicki Booten class or get me a gift certificate to her, her shop. So I think it's just good timing for that. So if you want a little bit of, um, help with using your phone and getting better photos, I'll post that one again. So we have two strips, a four and a half and a five and a half. Okay, so out of the four and a half, no, doesn't matter where you're cutting because we're using the heart side. So the four and a half by 12 strip, we're using the heart side. And you're going to cut two three and a half mats. So here, friends, too, let me show you something before you cut it because then you can make a decision. If you really prefer bigger photos, it's going here. So if you don't want to cut this piece yet, don't. And then you can decide what photo sizes you want. If you're going to uh, follow along with what I did, cut your mats. So for this one, it is two three and a half mats. So they will be three and a half by four and a half. Okay, two three and a half by four and a half. Look at more stuff for your homework. I will clip these. So again, that was out of the four and a half by 12 strip and we cut two three and a half inch mats. And then it does matter where you cut these ones. This is your five and a half inch strip. And this is gonna go on that um, Polaroid page. So I cut um, the one out of the pinks and reds and the other out of the bottom of the strip out of the blues and greens. Do whatever makes you happy, but I found that they popped best on the yellow um, background. So we are going to cut two four and a half inch mats. So I'm going to cut one out of the um, blues and greens at four and a half. And if you notice, if you're getting a little bit of the yellow, just cut it on the top of the green strip. Okay, so it's slightly smaller than that. So I just cut the green and blues out. And then I'm going to do the same and cut the pinks with the red out. So it is slightly smaller than four and a half, but you get the gist, right? Oh, you print all the photos, right, Cindy? It is magical. Why does it help, just asking Suzanne, why does it help if I show the layout before I cut the paper? I'm curious because this is how you're, like in my brain, I that doesn't compute. So I want, because it always is super helpful for me moving forward when I'm teaching, um, I want to know, like sometimes I can't do it. Like when we're doing a mini book, there's too many pages. So the only thing I ever show is something that's tricky with scoring and folding in the direction. But I'm just curious. I'm not. I'm not being a smart butt. I'm. I want to know 
why that is helpful. Is it because you just like, or do you need to see where it's going? I just peeled that off the back of my earring, just so you know. So yeah, you understand what I'm saying, right? I'm not calling you out. I, just, I want to understand how that helps so I can be better at it. So I hope you understand, because it's very hard sometimes when I do these, like I will say stuff or, and people sometimes, and I'm not, I'm not again talking about you at all, Suzanne, I'm just saying this. Um, I will make comments and sometimes because you can't see my face, you don't understand, like I taught one class and I really offended somebody and it wasn't at all what I was saying, but it's how the person heard it or read it into it. And that's hard because if you know me, right, I never want to do that. Because like you said, if we will be using a different size photo, so we could do it on that one, but sometimes I can't. Like we have to just go with it or you don't cut your mats because some of it's too tricky with this stuff. But um, when I can, I will definitely show you that because you're visual. Well, you know what? But here, can I, I'm going to, as a teacher who's done this for a long time, do you want to also know why I think for some of you, um, it, and this is probably going to, I don't want to make anybody mad, but it is definitely, I find with paper cutting, remember what I said, giving up the control is really hard. And um, it's like, uh, what do you call that? Future, not future tripping, but you need to see where it's going in case you want to make changes. But if we did that, um, you'd never get your paper cut because you'd be switching up a lot of things. So what I really recommend if that is like you might want to, oh, I would have liked to use this paper here or that one there, that because these classes are recorded, maybe watch and then do your paper cutting after and then you can switch anything out because that's really tricky. It would take a long time to get through these, right? Because we're already at 12 o'clock. So um, I am not in any way saying one way is right or wrong, but that might be something super helpful for these, right? Super helpful is like if you're like, oh, I would have liked using this one um, or using this side that maybe um, watch the paper cutting and then you can uh, do that after. Because that I think is could be super helpful. The only thing we have left right now is the um that's so me guilty as charged and you know what francine like if you've met me in person and a lot of the people who are here have i've been teaching for years and i totally get it it's very very hard because don't forget i walk around a class and i've had like a hundred people in my class and i can see the ones who are struggling because it's very hard to give up the control guess who would be just like that in a class this girl this girl, I would totally be like that. Well, maybe I, I might have wanted to use a blue and now I had to use the pink. <laughs> and then I just go, whatever, it's a class, I can recreate any of this after. But to to um, lessen your stress and getting mad at yourself because you didn't cut something right because you were trying to think three steps ahead is I find in a class setting, I just totally go with it. And then I can always come back and switch it out. And, um, and, and it is like, I, I hope you guys are getting what I'm saying and it's in no way a criticism because I get it. I'm totally like that. I am a total disruptor in a class, but now I've learned. I just sit in the back corner and do my own thing. Um, but yeah, it totally is. It's very, very hard to give the control up, but in a class setting, you kind of, it, you kind of, I think you will enjoy the process and the whole experience better if you go, whatever. It's one class. If I end up hating it, I'll still take away one or two new things that I learn, and then I just move on. But I'm right there with you. And guess what classes I take, friends, are the ones I would never create on my own. The thing that I would never pick. Like, say I don't like um, grungier or uh, more earthy things. That's a class I'll take. Because I'm going to learn something there because it's what I don't do already. So, isn't that crazy? So now we're going to cut the yellow cardstock and it's just mats. So this is the one. Um, well, a lot of these go in uh, the 4x4 four four pocket page. And then one is just a photo mat. So you can always come back and cut these after, but I'm going to cut it. We're going to cut three 4x12 strips. And I hope, you know, well, one, I know that for sure I'm going to offend somebody because it's just the, the case that... Um, 
my goal is if I make the majority happy, I'm winning, but I've learned along the way, and especially when you put yourself out there on these YouTubes, and I find in our current world with the stress that people are under, that um, the people I don't make happy will certainly voice their opinion because they like to tell me or send me messages, and I'm totally okay with it. But like I said, um, just do you, whatever's making you happy. If I talk too much and you don't enjoy listening to me, watch this on mute, but you don't need to tell me, right? That's fine. You don't have to, if you don't like the sound of my voice, mute it. And I'm totally fine with that, but you don't have to message me while I'm doing the free YouTubes and tell me that you hate my voice or uh, you don't like the color of my hair or whatever. Like I just always find, uh, totally with Tim, if you don't have anything nice to say, find something nice or just tell your friend, but you don't have to tell Vicky, right? So out of your four by 12, and, and that's not for any reason, it's not like I've been bombarded with any of that stuff, but I just find, here's my little soapbox moment, that the world kind of has sucked for the last two years. Anywhere that I can put sunshine out, I'm 100% for it. And can I be a jerk sometimes? 100%, but I don't need to share that with the rest of the world. Just my family, <laughs> my husband gets it, or my mom. But um, I just, I really think that uh, your vibe attracts your tribe and your vibe also attracts what you get in return. So I'm done with that. So out of my first four by 12, I'm gonna cut three four by fours. Out of my second four by 12s, I'm gonna cut four by fours. So I'm just gonna stack them together and I'm gonna cut three four by fours. Okay, four by fours. And sometimes you ever find that you wonder if this paper is really actually square? Because even when I was um, cut it, cutting it out, like when I got to my last four by four, even though I'm very, because I'm OCD about that stuff, it wasn't exactly four inches. So I always wonder if they're like some of this paper is really square. So out of that one, so out of two strips, I cut six four by fours, okay? So these are gonna go into, and some are stuck together into that four by four uh, pocket page, okay? And my yellow, if you bought my kit, is a little lighter because I just grabbed it out of my stash. Um, but yes, that is that. And out of the last one, I'm gonna cut a five by four. A five by four. And then that is for your homework. Okay, and we are done the paper cutting. I'm gonna tell you as we go along, I use some sheets of white and black and I'm not cutting it right now, but I will tell you what they are when we get there because uh, I didn't grab it. I don't have white cardstock or black cardstock here, but I did write it down. So when I share this, like the white cardstock mats I wrote down and I didn't write the black down, but it's just two pieces. That was a reminder to grab it this morning and I forgot. So any questions so far? We are done the paper cutting. We are done the paper cutting. What I'm going to recommend is um, let's take a 10-minute uh, break because I need to use the ladies' room, and I'll put a little note here that so if anybody um, went away and comes back and they're like, oh, the video's frozen. It's not. I just think that now is the perfect time. Oh, and I'll, I'll answer questions before I go, but I'm going to run, grab an apple, a piece of cheese, and a potty break, okay? So, but I will write something down so people know. Potty break, okay? 10 minute break, but I'm not leaving yet. I'll answer your questions, 10 minute break. So if you don't need a break, cause maybe you already went and you took your potty break, just get your pieces together and maybe start organizing your ephemera packs, all right? Like I said, I'm not gonna be pulling this ephemera. I'm just gonna show you on the layouts because like for the next bit, the live part is I'm gonna explain what goes on each page, where we put each piece. And then um, I will tell you where the stuff is. And what I'd recommend when you get to that point is when I hold the layup up like this, freeze when you come back and watch, pause the video, finish a page and then move on to the next one, okay? So just to give you an idea of how this will run now from this point on, 
is we're going to separate all of our pieces and get everything we need for all seven pages. And then I'm going to be explaining, like, this is out of the sticker sheet. This is out of, like, this is a freaking mini icon sticker book. You see what I'm saying? This is really meant kind of for journaling or um, traveler's notebook, but we can definitely use them as scrapbookers. So as we move along, I will hold the page and tell you where the things are from. And then when I'm done with each page where you've organized your bits, you can come back if you have all afternoon to kind of play and then just go back to that point when the video is no longer live, pause it, and then you can start assembling. Because I'm not going to lie, um, I will, I'll post the cutting diagram, Sherry, on Vicky Boot and Creative Community on, on Facebook. Um, so as soon as I'm done, I will post all those things so you have a reference. And I will also post a picture of each layout on, uh, on both my Facebook page and in the group page, okay? Question, will there be an instruction book to look at download somewhere? Um, no, because already, right, this is a free class. Uh, I don't have the time to write that stuff out, but what I will do for you, Jen, is take photos as soon as I'm done, edit them and pop them up on uh, my Facebook, uh, on my regular Facebook, and on my um, Facebook community group page, which it's definitely, if you haven't joined that already, you want to be there. Because uh, Christmas is coming and there'll be giveaways and lots of fun that will only happen in that group page. And then I will also post the cutting diagram there. Okay, let me read some questions and I will um, then go and take my break. Uh, do, do, do. You can also, and yes, also screenshot by using your Windows um, key shift S. A lot of people will do that. And quest, oh. Did I miss anything? The cutting guide? Yes, I'm going to post it after. Can I tell you a story too, friends? A lot of classes now moving forward. This really is all you need. I'm not going to... I used to write pages and pages of instructions, which now, just to kind of give you like a little glimpse in my life now, is um, I design product with American Crafts. So we have Warm Wishes that just came out and then Fernwood, which came out right after. Um, and right now I've already, while that was all happen happening, we've finished my next collection and I'm working on another one. So that happens, plus Friday Night Lives, plus this free class, plus kidding, shipping. It's, it's crazy time, so... I'm finding if I do a live class and I'm showing everybody everything, you're going to find that my instructions are not as detailed as they used to be. So when you do warm wishes, I'm not going to write every step, but I will give you images of everything in the download, the cutting diagram, and some basic um, technique things. But what I find is you have the visual option for all of my classes that you can come back and refer to. So for time's sake, you're going to find moving forward that uh, the written instructions, I'm not going to write books because I used to. And it, it, I hate it. Anybody who teaches, only the people who actually love writing, like writing instructions. For every single one of us will tell you, <laughs> it's the worst part ever. It is literally the worst part. And it takes hours of work. So right, Natalie? Natalie's out there. Do you know what I'm talking about? You picking up what I'm putting down? Totally a night nightmare. Um, the cutting guide, right? And pictures of the finish. And then you have me live where I explain all of it. So it's great. Question. I still have three sheets of paper. Did I miss some cuts? Nope. It's bonus. Like I said, I made seven pages just out of what we're using. Um, if we would have kept going, we probably could make another seven. You have enough left. This kit. So a lot of people probably when they saw the price of it was like, ooh, that's pricey. Um really wasn't because one doodle bug product is a little bit pricier than others because of just the quantity of what you get in there and so for everybody who bought that kit which i think which i charge 80 85 canadian uh, was literally just the price of product you got all of this for free so just moving forward if you're new to this make sure that you watch and always know that my kits are usually there is no price markup maybe ten dollars 
So say Fernwood and that you buy that. I think I put that for 180. It's 15 hours of class time plus your kit. If you go out right now and start pricing all of that, and that's Canadian dollars, um, good luck. You guys can do it on your own. And I know some of you, I apologize, that live in other countries have to because I only ship to Canada and the U.S. But there's, there's rhyme and reason. And really, um, I'm a crafter first and do this as a job. But I, I like to make sure that I give you as much as I possibly can. I don't think you'd ever come back and say there wasn't enough, right? Um, a hubby's coming with your dinner. I love that, Karen. Perfect timing, right? Um, so any questions? And I, I need to use the bathroom and I need to eat an apple because um, I laugh. You know what I had for breakfast this morning? A piece of fish. I got my protein in, but uh, yeah, a piece of fish. Uh, can you put the diagram? Oh, yes. So let's do this. I certainly can. And then you guys can snap it. Is that good? And then hopefully you can see that, right? So anybody who comes. And I'm just going to run upstairs and I'll be back in a few minutes. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, if you're not done your cutting or getting your stuff together, you can do that as well. And I will be back in 10. You had a protein shake. I love it. I'm going to get my water because I'm very parched. And I'll be back in a minute, friends. See you in a second.
my water jug. What did I miss? I'm going to put my ink away right now before we get started because if you've met me that's driving me crazy <laughs> that they're laying all over my table. need to, one of my goals is to clean my scrapbook room up so I can do a tour because I would like to share my dream box and the changes I made around my room. So this is good. Yeah, it is out of control giant. 187 pieces in that ephemera pack. Isn't that crazy and awesome? And that's why those ephemera packs probably in Canada sell for what, $12, $13? Because it's a lot, right? It's a lot of stuff in there. Okay, just doing a little cleanup. I need to get my um, new distress, my new Tim's distress ink out and do something magical with that. But I haven't had time to do anything. It's crazy, crazy town around here. So this afternoon, when I'm done, I need to um, go and finish mailing stuff. I stuff to get out and uh, that's what I did yesterday we drove to Burlington two of us Rich and I and sent a whole bunch of stuff off to the US and now we have to work on that again today oh no oh, yes I'm sure your puppy made a huge mess because Irene welcome to parenthood <laughs> I'm sure that puppy made a mess um, Hi, Lynn, how are you? Just dropping in to say hello. Uh, hi, how are you, my friend? Uh, we played. We did some mixed media. We cut paper, and now we're going to start assembling some layouts. Very fun. Um, do we have any questions? Just tuning in. Hi, Mari, how are you? I was. I went up to have my oranges because I'm missing. I eat every about every two hours, um, and... I am going to be completely off track today, but very happy. I've lost 17 pounds and I feel so good. It feels so good. Um, but Stacy, question, should have all US orders gotten labels created? No, no. Um, it's only the ones that were farthest away from me. So not every kit. I still have quite a few kits to send out and I'm waiting for that thicker. So the only ones that I sent out so far were for Canada, BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, um, like the furthest away. Really, I think the majority I have left, unless I missed somebody. So if I did, just email me at vickybootenkits at gmail.com or Ontario. So the most in Canada should be Ontario. Um, and then for the U.S. is anyone who is close to like New York State. You guys are still, because it usually only takes you, uh, your stuff like two days a day for some of you for it to arrive. So if there's special circumstances and I have missed, just email me at vickybootenkits at gmail.com. I have a few more I could send out. And then the other option was if you don't care about the Christmas thicker, I can mail it out this week. Um, and I can refund the $7 for it, but... This thicker is currently being held hostage. This is the Warm Wishes kit. It's huge. This thicker is what I'm waiting for. And I can't, 
replace it. Like you can't replace this, right? Even somebody, there was a question about why couldn't I just replace the cardstock? It's not as easy when you're ordering the, the number that I am. And where do you get it from when you've already worked that price in there? I can't buy it retail, right? So there's there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes with this stuff that um, just trust me. It's really, if I could have it all out of this house, I'd be quite happy for it because for as much stress as you feel, um, I feel at times 5 million. Like it stresses me out. I don't, one, like to disappoint anybody. And two, this class is November the 12th and 13th. So I feel like it's supposed to come this week that if I work all weekend, other than I have one thing to do with a very special friend of mine, but then I will be working all weekend, Rich and I kidding these up and they will go out on the following Monday and Tuesday. And then we should be fine. It should be absolutely fine. Um, if I can't get that thicker until Monday or Tuesday, there's still, we're going to be working. We're going to have boxes open and ready to go all over. So, um, again, it is, there's the COVID related stuff is for real craziness, right? It's craziness, but it is, it's, it does stress me out because it throws everything, right? Everything is so delayed for me. Like Fernwood arrives this week. Um, and I'm only missing maybe uh, the paper pad, like the six by eight paper pad. So Devin has her reading week and she's super excited because she's going to be kidding all of the papers. Um, but I'm going to have that one's going to be out way faster than Warm Wishes. Like Warm Wishes, uh, some products started arriving in July and here we are almost November, right? So it definitely isn't because I'm like laying around eating bonbons because <laughs> it's not happening. It's just, yeah, it's kind of crazy times, right? I can't believe how fast November's coming. Me either, right? Me either. So, yeah, it is crazy times, right? Um, how do you learn about kits? And, and here's the other thing. So, friends, if you're on my um, newsletter, so if you go to vickybooten.com and you are on, signed up for my newsletter... If you aren't receiving it and you've signed up, I cannot fix that. It is your email provider blocks those um, emails that are sent out like a newsletter. So if you're on Gmail, make sure you always check, check your promotions folder. You might not have even known you had one. And the other thing is if I've said newsletter went out, search your email, just Vicky Booten and it should pop up. But uh, your only other option is to sign up for a different email account just for that kind of stuff, like send your old Navy stuff and whatever. But um, tons of them bounce and tons are suspended and I can't fix that. So uh, I send newsletters out. I post on vickybooten.com, which is my website. And it's always a good idea to join the Vicky Booten Creative Community because that's really where we talk about all of the things. So it's on Facebook and it's a group page. Um, but that's where I talk about all of the things, right? Transportation issues overseas. Yes, shipping containers and friends. It's not just scrapbooking stuff. Look at the stamping community. Uh, you have tons of delays with that because there's parts of the polymer that are missing. So even though, like I saw Gina just posted, Gina K about stamps, that um, even though they're made in the U.S., we are a global community. So the packaging pieces could be missing. Um, uh, parts for the tools could be missing. No one should be surprised at all by delays that are out there. Go into any store and your favorite deodorant hasn't been on the shelf for like three months. Or uh, the prices of gasoline. Or um, you can't buy a car right now. So for like it's one of those things I always find crazy that our people are surprised, surprised that there's delays on everything that I'm not surprised at all. But it is a global pandemic and it has affected everything. And I figure it's going to take a year from now before it's ever cleaned up. Uh, one of the my favorite manufacturers I ordered from said for the one thing that I order all the time, they're like, it usually takes three weeks. It now takes six months. So for a manufacturer doesn't sometimes have the dollars to order like triple of everything, triple of everything. And maybe it's not going to sell. So 
now it's just one of those things just to practice patience. And I know a lot of people don't have any patience left because it's been a freaking hard two years. Hard, hard, hard. For There's been loss. There's been health issues, job factors, all of it, right? So I just always look at it and go, just try to find the good in something, right? Um, Gina's explanation was great. It, well, Gina is just like a su my superhero anyway. Gina Kay is one of the best human beings I've ever met. And I'm very happy to call her my friend, but she tells you like it is, right? These companies want to make money. It's, they need, they have employees to pay and, uh, houses just like the rest of us, right? Um, so they want to get you the things. Nobody's holding out on it because uh, they want to make anybody unhappy. But I feel like uh, tensions are high. So people who normally would, um, we have to check ourselves sometimes, right? That's the point I'm making that we uh, sometimes are on our last, our last nerve. So um, I even catch myself sometimes. And then I'm now I'm sugary sweet everywhere I go. I'm super nice to the wait staff because I have a friend who owns Arby's and she cannot staff it because kids don't want to work and they quit on her. They don't show up for shifts. It's just a crazy world we live in right now, right? Okay, let's see. Mental health services suck right now. 100% Irene. I cannot even imagine. And here's um, the one thing is that people who, you know, have needed that, but I bet you add to that tons now that need it that maybe never have in the past. Um, I just think find the joy where you can and uh, just practice a little kindness, I think, where you can as well. Because I'll tell you, if you send me an email that is nice and you actually, like, say hi to me and then answer, it makes it a lot easier than people who just um, demand things. And probably I, I try to read things back to and go, oh, how could I word that better? Because there's no inflection in my voice in an email. So anywhere I send an email now, it's like I want to make sure that I don't sound, because sometimes I could be agitated. Something's missing out of my order that I just ordered from Old Navy. So I just try, because let me tell you, what is the saying? You, you more flies with honey. I really truly believe that because you never know what other people are going through, right? So I feel like everybody should be back um, from our little break and we can get started. Glad your kid is still slinging coffee. Um, she's not actually. Devin is now in dental hygiene at uh, Niagara College and that course is intense. She has eight classes and that kid only takes one day off a week. So she actually quit Timmy's um, and she couldn't have done it. She couldn't have done it. So now she just works for me when she needs a little extra money. And uh, neither one of my kids are currently working part-time jobs. Riley, well, because Riley's on a co-op. So for six of the months, he works in a, a accounting firm. And the other is like, just put your focus into school, right? But it's crazy times out there. Vicky is your therapy. Well, I hope one, and just know if I ever say anything and um, you feel like it, I meant something that wasn't nice by it, just know it never would be my intention. Anyone who knows me, I would never, if anything, I am a, try to send virtual hugs out there. So like I know I've had a couple instances um, this year where when you're in big class settings like this, like maybe it sounds like I'm short or whatever and it's never my intention. So just know that if at first you're like, wow, that was harsh. Um, it never is meant to be. And maybe it's how I'm, what I'm trying to say doesn't come out the way that, um, or what my intention is. Okay, let me read a couple of these things and then uh, we'll get on to this. School is her job right now, 100%, eight courses eight courses and they are clinics and uh like do you know for her um uh anatomy class she has 200 slides with each one of those classes 200 slides it's a lot of information but she's doing really really well uh, it's a great time to use your stash for what you can't get 100 percent, right shop your stuff did I miss anything? Um, do I think we're good, right? 
Um, if I did, just say it again, okay, friends? If I missed a, a question or I just did something weird on my screen here. I don't even know what I did. I can't move through now. See, and I don't know if you guys can see them or not, but these are the funny things. And I'll say it. My mother will be like, "You, why do you even say that? But I have a thumb down on the video. And it could be a kid because a lot of them out there. But it always makes me laugh because I'm like, I can't imagine a world for me that I would find pleasure in making somebody else feel bad. So uh, I always look at that and go, really? And I'll see it on my friends' videos or other videos I watch and go, wow, you really need a hug, <laughs> right? You really need a hug. So I always find that is whatever. Whatever you're trying to achieve there, it only works for a minute. And then all I do is send you love because that's kind of sad, right? It's sad. It is. It's so dumb, right, Mari? But in this, in the same breath, really, um, you have to look at it because where could that be coming from? That they were looking for fly fishing and they see some weirdo doing scrapbooking and they don't like it, so you just feel like you need to put that out there. But what a better world we would have is if then move on, right? You have lots of other options, but I don't feel uh, why people feel the need to do that. So if you are one of those people. Yeah, maybe if you put some more positive out in the world, you'll get a lot more happiness back your way. Okay, friends, let's go. I feel like um, that gave everybody a time to walk their dog, get a drink, have a bite to eat, and we're going to start talking about this stuff now. Let's go. Uh, put on your Teflon suit, 100%. Like I said, when I read it, I will have, I think it's just natural to have that first initial kind of thing like so I'm here for hours out of my time that I could be spending doing other things but I'm here because I love doing it and you feel the need to do that is kind of sad right so this is our first page how did it turn out guys what kind of uh, result did you get what kind of result did you get um, did you like it do you have any questions about the mixed media before we uh, move on I have to move my screen. I don't know what I did here, but I can't see. So I want to make sure I'm centered. Okay. So I, you notice that I never cut when I'm using foundations paper. I always leave this piece on the top. And I'll tell you why. Because if you're like, why does she do that? If you run your finger on it, you can feel a ledge on one side where it's perforated. Then I know that's the back of my foundations paper. I can feel where the perforation has popped through. So I never cut this off until I'm done doing whatever mixed media because the paper is a little different on the front and back of foundations. The front has sizing on it, like whatever the process is when they make the paper, that there's a surface on the front that will, uh, your, your mediums will react a little bit differently because it's almost sealed like a gesso, but it's not a gessoed paper. Um, so the back will be a little bit more absorbent and the front, the mediums will sit on top and not soak into your paper as fast. So that is why I always leave that piece on the top. So I can cut it off now because I'm done my mixed media. And sorry if my head's in the shot, I just can't line it up. Okay, and this is the base for this first page. All I'm going to show you is which mats I put on here and I will show you the finished page and we'll talk about where I found the things. But this is a this page is time consuming to put all of the little um, rainbow pieces on here, but uh, it's not a ton of product, just a ton of stickers on here. OK. Oops, what am I doing, Vicky? What did you do on your screen? Now I can't figure out anything. There we go. There we go. Okay, so we need to get the yellow mat that we cut. Oh, look it. I mixed my bits up a little bit. Which is the five, whatever this one was. It's this one I used, is the five by four. That's that mat right here. Okay. So I need that. And then one of your plaid squares. 
So these are four by fours. You just need one of these. That's all we need out of our cut paper. So like I said, if um, you didn't catch it, I'm not going to build all these layouts with you. I'm going to explain what I did, um, all the pieces, and then I will go and photograph everything, still photos upstairs where the light's better, and I will add them on to Facebook so you have a reference, but you can also screen capture. Like right now, if you wanted to take a screenshot of this layout, I think it's centered in here, you can get a screenshot of this and then you'll have a reference. Or guess what? If you're watching this and it's not recorded or you're not watching it live, pause the video. Come back and pause the video. And now I'm going to do a close-up of this as well. Okay? So you can see there are light pink and then fuchsia pink stickers. And then we go into orange, yellow, green, um, kind of a sea foamy turquoise and then into a deeper turquoise. What I'm going to recommend because I didn't do it is I would use a wet glue and glue these down because I find on the distress ink background, do you see they're kind of popping up? The other thing if you can notice is I popped up. The only thing I popped up is the little um, rolls of twine. All the rolls of twine are popped up. Everything else is flat. But I found that that just adds a little bit of texture to the layout, okay? So, um, and then you have your titles out of your ephemera pack. The mat is popped up. This is popped up. And then I put that little smile sticker on there. But I believe everything else is found in one of two places. When you go into your... Um, mini icons and start looking through like look at everything's in rainbow so you can use whatever you want in here right like look at all of this magic everything is in rainbow these are what I popped up okay so those are your mini icons and then I used these the rainbow heart sprinkles, which really, when you find these, I would buy like 10 of these. I think this is a great um, thing to have in your stash. All these sprinkles, um, enamel dots, like that kind of thing, I absolutely adore. So that is all that goes on this layout there. And the words could be from, let me grab it. Some of them will be from here. See? These little stickers here. Okay, so I used this, I used fun, I used happy in the green, and my happy place. So that's where the stickers are from, your 12 by 12 uh, cute and crafty sticker sheet, this and that stickers, okay? So for right now, that's all we're doing. We can grab that. If you opened your ephemera pack and you found colorful fun, you can add that. Smile, this one is the word bubble. See it? The word bubble. And I popped it up in the background with foam dots. Okay? So I'm just going to set this aside. And like I said, this will take you a little bit of time. So when I am not live anymore, throw your favorite Netflix on. I'm trying to find practical magic. I would like to start watching some Halloween movies. Um, but I can't find practical magic. And then just start putting your bits down. Okay, and that'll be it. And look at all the magic was really in doing that watercolor background. And you could repeat this with, like you said, with the villainous potion. Do it in purples and, and greens and do a total Halloween and orange Halloween layout, right? But that's all you need for that one. I'm going to set it aside. And let's grab what are we going to do next? I'm going to do that one last. I'm going to talk about the pocket page, okay, friends? So for your pocket page, um, and if you don't have a pocket page, you could cut these mats down or you could do a grid layout, right? Put it on a piece of white cardstock and put it on there, right? I love that movie, right? Practical Magic, absolutely love that movie. So I'm going to, because there's a glare, I'm going to try to hold this so you guys can see. 
So see what's going on in that top corner? Right? And then I'll show you again. Let's grab the pieces first, I guess. Okay? Some people are using other, uh, they didn't have this kit, right? So they're using other bits of, um, other bits of uh, doodlebug kits. I think I have to pay for Crave though, don't I? There's the thing, I said Crave and Stars, I think have it. And I'm like, do I really need another um, movie streaming kind of thing? So I'll have to look for it. So grab your yellow mats and your plaid mats. And let's just kind of lay it out. We need a yellow mat here, 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 and here. Okay, so yellow mats. I rounded the corners on all of these. So grab whatever corner rounder you use, right? And go ahead and round the corners. A bigger one. How much is Crave a month? Because, and is it worth it? Anybody out there who uh, has Crave, is it good? Like what shows? Is it just good movies or are there good shows on that? Because I would do it if I'm going to use it. Oops. But if it's not worth the money, I don't know if I want to use it. Maybe I'll just rent it on um, iTunes. But it is one of my favorite movies, right? Okay. So round your corners. I was not putting that in there square, so. Round your corners. And I did not round the corners on the plaid ones, just on my yellow mats. Okay. So the white mats on this layout are just to show you photo placement. You don't have to white mat it. Right? It's just because I don't print photos for my classes. Okay. And then you have your four. I've never heard of Practical Ma Magic. It, it is a comedy. It's a little bit of all of the things. It is Sandra Bullock. And I just forgot who is the... Uh, and Nicole Kidman. And it, it, I love that movie. I love it. It's an old one, but you know, at Halloween, right? Do you have your, what's your favorite Halloween movies to watch? And I don't watch scary movies. I'm old and I don't enjoy that anymore. So right now, these are the pieces that you need for this layout, okay? Question, is your corner rounder EK success? Yes, it came in a set of two. Because these are the ones I carry in my shop, right? So I have these ones and this one, which has been out of stock for a long time. Um, I know I owe somebody it because they ordered it. And I, for some reason, I, I didn't get them in my order. Um, but they're on their way next month. So I have the We Are one that has three, three and one. And then these are EK Success. One is a half inch and one is a one inch quarter rounder. And then I also use my old Fiskars. Because Vicky probably has six different styles of corner rounder. But it's one of those, if you're new to scrapbooking or paper crafting and you're out, like looking at what tools to buy, you want a corner rounder. It is definitely um, something you want to add. And circle punches. I have circle punches in every size. Even though I have dies, I still like my circle punches. Right? Yeah, this is We Are. And these are... Um, EK success and I carry both of them usually right basic tools so that is the base for our layout okay so they're pockets and now I'll show you so for the upper left hand corner I layered what looks like a stack of pattern paper and then popped up the little sticker that is a stack of photographs 
And then this is a little mini pack of odds and ends. I love that they took all of their packaging and made it into um, little pieces. And there's like the little enamel dots, the sprinkles. There's a ruler and off of, cause this also was in the kit, is the sprinkles that look like this. The scissors are out of there, okay. And then uh, the little tape runner, and then just some buttons and bits. Because I meant for this top square to look like um, it's what's laying on my desk, right? What's laying on my desk. And I'm hoping here, this will help. There you go. That's what it looks like, okay? No, I couldn't get any more kits, Colleen. Um, this collection sold out. So when I ordered, I got literally the last bits of what they had and it sat in my shop forever because I hadn't finished the projects and moving forward this is something you guys will learn if you're new if you like my style you buy the kit because um all of my stuff looks like this so it's one of those things I know for some it scares people right to invest and then you're like but I don't know what she's going to make with it and you know the people who've been around for a long time because they just buy it because they're like, I'll love what she does. And then they're gone. Like literally when I showed the layouts, the kits were gone in 15 minutes. What was left, right? So in the upper right hand corner, I put this little piece down that looks like a cutting mat with the glue stick, glue gun and glue sticks. And there are pop dots all over and then a little exacto knife, right? Yeah, it was restocked three times by Doodlebug and sold out every single time. I would not be surprised if they bring it back again. I would. I'd bring it back again. I think it would still do well. And then all your, like, the outer ones, I just put a white mat. This piece is on top of my pocket. I like to do that on pocket pages so it's not underneath the reflective bit. So um, it says, eat, sleep, craft, repeat, make time to make stuff. Stampin' the Night Away and Craftiness is Happiness. And then your middle one, which is kind of my title block, is the um, sticker that I popped up. And then I put the little scissor sticker with foam dots, the little red paint with a foam dot, and then a little splat of red paint for underneath uh, my happy place. Okay? So popped up, popped up, popped up, and it still sits perfectly in the pocket page. It's not too much with the foam dots. If you uh, don't use foam dots, that literally is one of the easiest ways to elevate your projects is to use um, light and shadow with foam dots, right? So here you go. This little bottom corner has the little um, traveler's notebook that Natalie loves, a little sketchbook. This little camera is off of the sprinkles. So remember the sprinkles, if you can't find it, it could be in that. And then I layered stickers down here, a pencil and a pen, and then a little coffee cup popped up. Sometimes two friends, look it, I will only pop the top of something up and then leave the bottom flat because you don't want layers and layers and layers of pop dots so just be selective and maybe only pop a corner up or something so that's your bottom corner yeah you can't wait it's one of those things that you'll find that um some of my kit sales like fernwood i still have quite a few of those kits left but as soon as I post the samples, everybody will want it. And then the product's all gone. So I can't get any more of it. So it's one of those things you just make that decision of if you want to do it or not. But yeah, as soon as like warm wishes, I'll be working on the class kit this week because I'll have a lull until till those stickers come. And as soon as I print that album, which if you've done my album, it's all going to be pop-ups and flips. And I love doing Christmas ones. And Natalie and I will be working this week on some custom cut files for that one. So if you have die cutting machines, we're going to add, there'll be lots of extra for that one, right? So, so Shelly's saying, if you can uh, swing it for Crave for Succession, season one and two, so it's good. I'll have to look into it. But, um, 
This was the photo printer. So see what I've done? I'll take it out so you can see. Maybe I can't. Can you see what I did? So I sliced with my X-Acto knife and a ruler a little piece on the top of the printer and then I put this in there. And then I put a sticker on top that says hello and then I fake wrote on it. You could write real words, but I faked it, okay? So that it was printing journaling out. And then there is a little glue gun and an X-Acto knife on the bottom. So for that one, right? Any chance of a traveler's notebook Friday night live or class? Yeah, eventually. It's very hard because um, it just is never ending, but I would love to. I love traveler's notebook. I love little ones. I don't know if I would do that as a Friday night live though, or if I would do it as a full on class. Show again, your hands were out of frame for cutting. Which one, this one? This one? I can't see on my screen, so let me move it if I can. There. Okay, I'm hoping you can see this. So when you slice the back, see where the white is? So I just slit at the top and then slid the little piece in to make it look like uh, the printer words were coming out printer words <laughs> printer words whatever that means right question um is that a blank piece of paper yes with a sticker on it that says hello and i just hand wrote with a black marker i made this so it's not in your kit i made it right and then the little uh, glue and i have to tell you when i sat down and made this i watched netflix for hours probably watched a whole series because this, like, while we're sitting here doing it, you're going to see this is going to take you all week to finish these. It's This is not going to be super fast, right? This is not going to be super fast because all this layering and clusters uh, is time-consuming but awesome, right? So when I sat and did this, I had the best time ever just sitting and making because this was totally just for me and the bonus you guys got to um, buy the kit and you're doing it with me today. But I absolutely loved making this. So that's everything for the front side. Are you ready for B side? So when you turn it, you're going to want to add. And friends, don't panic right now is why she's going so fast. Um, you are not meant to finish this right now. Really, I just want you to grab your pieces and then you can come back and pause and create. Okay, otherwise we would be here for two more days to finish all of this. So you need three pieces of this. Okay, three pieces of this. And this is just the back side of the yellow cardstock. You don't have to add anything there, right? So grab your three pieces of four by four, and that's for the strip across. And then let's talk about what we did here. So for the pocket on the left-hand side, when I build these, before I put anything on it, I stick my two cards together and make sure they're cut the same size, okay? The one thing you're gonna notice I did is I took the rainbow washi and, and uh, put washi tape right across the bottom of this so that my car wasn't floating, like it needs to sit on something. So I used this Rainbow Bright, which I could eat. I love it so much, um, right across the bottom. And you don't want to wrap, well, you could wrap it before you put your two pieces together because then you have a nice finish edge. Now I'm looking at it and I probably should have done it. I just snipped it with my scissors. And then I put a road trip piece up here and then popped up the car, okay? road trip and popped up the car. So that is on your middle pocket on the back side, because here's my binding holes on the back side of the left. So I'll slide that guy back in. I love pocket page scrapbooking because your design is all laid out for you. So um, don't poo poo the pocket pages. They really are magical. Let me grab this guy and show you the middle one. So the middle one, you could put 
journaling on here. You could put um, whatever you want on here. I left it open and I just put retreat and then weekend retreat popped up and then two of the sprinkle mini hearts on there. And I love how the black pops on that, right? And whatever washi you have, if you had to um, source your kit, you don't have to put rainbow washi. It could be po polka dots. It could be black. It could be whatever. I only used it because I had it in the kit and had to put it somewhere, right? So you don't have to have rainbow washi. You do not have to do it exactly like I did. Actually, like a black polka dot would work even better on that because it would really um, ground whatever you're putting on there. So, and if you don't have washi tape, guess what you can use? A strip of pattern paper, right? Uh, it depends on the pocket page for the side loading or top loading, and it depends on the brand. They're all different, right? So for this one, oh, look it, it's a little craft bag. I love it. Popped it up and oh crop. That's it for this page, okay? But I love the pocket scrapbooking. And can I tell you something? When I do stuff like this, I actually finish it. Um, I would like, we've talked about it, and because time is never on my side, I would love to do a year-long subscription of pocket scrapbooking. That every month, or maybe even every two months, that I send a kit out. And we do like four or five pages every month. One day when I can finally hire somebody to help me, um, I would love to do that. We're begging Cynthia to get that as a custom, a sale for Doodle Bug Caddy. I think it would be awesome, right? I would love that. I want a rainbow one. That's what I would want, Kristen. If I was going to email Cynthia or talk to her, I would say, oh, I would love that. Yeah, ribbon could work too, whatever you have. But a strip of pattern paper would be perfect too. So that is the B side, right? The B side. And that one is done. I'm going to set this aside and let's go on to the next one. Wouldn't that be fun a year long? Because then guess what? Everybody would have a whole year scrapbooked. I've done it before. I, I did it uh, years ago. And it was a year long. So uh, you can buy the album. You can buy the pocket pages. And then every month you get everything you need to finish like five or six pages. I think it would be so much fun, right? Yeah, so that, I don't even, what brand is, well, I'll tell you what brand this one is. It's a doodle bug. This is a doodle bug pocket page. So it's side loading, summer top, but this one was a doodle bug. Okay, what one next? Which one next? These are the last ones that we have to do. Okay. Let's do this one. I didn't even give you guys a choice. <laughs> Let's do this one. So you will see. Oh, I should put my pieces, what I just used, aside. Because whoever bought this kit, I will package it all up nice and put all the pieces in there. So this one, you need your base. So out of your stuff, I have to, I hope they still have this paper. I need it. I need to order it. I love it. Look at the back side too. It just all makes me happy. So you need for this page, this piece is called Cute and Crafty. This is the base. So that is your base. And then grab your pink polka dot mats and your green striped mats. Okay. What I love about paper that has grid, so you'll see I do a lot of grid in my collections because I love that I can, if you're like me and I like everything lined up and perfect and spacing, that all these lines are magic. And I also think it does a wonderful thing with the eye, right? Very fun. So I am going to take, and I know I need a green, one of the... Um, you need one of these, the painted side. So I'm just gonna pick one that I like the color on. I need a green. And then I also did it where I switch the direction of the lines. And then I need two colors. 
are going to go here and down here. And then the rest are pink. And if you don't like the colorway, like you want to switch it up, then just use whatever you want, right? I wouldn't use this side. You can if you want. Um, but I like that that polka dot rests the eye. And that's the polka dots where my photos will go. So I'm going to do that. And you could switch any of this. You're the boss of your page, okay? Like I said, I'm only your crafting Yoda. And you, then you are 100% welcome to do whatever you want. So to give you an idea, because we need stuff going down this page, I lined everything up. See, one, two, three squares, and then one, two. So this first one sits centered in that block. So see, two rows, three rows centered in that block. It is glued flat, flat, flat. These ones are popped up. Okay, so whoever's getting this, I'm going to tack these down. I'm going to do it. And this is literally all the adhesive I would use, just in the center. And then this I put this way. Three and two centered in that block. There. Glued, okay? This one glued, and I'm only leaving about half an inch. About half an inch, okay? Glue it down. I want yellow on here for some reason. Let's see. Like it. Okay. I can use my lines again and then just line it up. And then as you do your first row, then everything can just line up accordingly. And then this pink guy is going to be popped up. And then I'm just going to throw four foam dots on here. And get, I need something for garbage because these things end up all over my house. The back of foam dots. I'll be, oh, what's on the floor? Oh, <laughs> it's a foam dot backing. And then I will line this up again with the same amount of space centered there, popped up. Okay. And then let's go in and it again is going to be that quarter inch going around all the way around. So let's just quickly throw that down and I will glue them with you. I have the new, um, the new Adele song in my head. So that is, you know, when you have, I don't know, do you guys have elevator music that will be stuck in your head? So that's what's in my head right now. Yeah. Did I sing it too? Because it's playing in my head, so I might have sang it out loud. <laughs> I apologize. These squares are two and a half. And if, did you cut it already? These are two and a half. So we cut all the paper already. So they're two and a half inch squares. But yes, it's, I'm singing it in my head. And I don't know if I, did I sing it out loud? Cause I might have, right? That's what I do. That's why I sing my words and all the time because I'm singing or dancing all of the time. If you were in my house or hung out with me, um, anybody who knows me outside of this, would let you would say yes Vicky sings all the time and I dance and it doesn't matter if I'm in Walmart if the song comes I was grocery shopping yesterday in uh, Longo's and I was totally singing to the music that was playing um, in the grocery store but now um, I was listening to that song on repeat so um, I have been singing it all day <laughs> So if I sing it out loud, I apologize. Yes, I can't wait for the whole album to come out. But if you haven't listened to it already, you need to go and look up her new single. I think it's called Easy On Me. But that's what I'm singing, that chorus. And I pretend I can sing just as well as she can. So in the car, if you drove past me, I'd be belting it out. And you could totally tell I was singing. You have that song on repeat everywhere. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So, and I was singing the easy part. Easy on me, baby. 
Yeah, I love it. Okay, so this one pops up. So all the pink pop up. These are flat because our embellishments are going to pop up. Okay? And now, by us putting this down, we know what real estate we have for our title and all the other pieces. Okay? This one has tape on it. I forgot. Let's do it. I love it. I cannot wait. One day, we are going to be able to have... Um, in person, and I really want a, a Vicky Booten retreat where we do mixed media, and then we have an open craft area where um, after the classes, we all just sit in there, listen to music, and hang out and craft. So you would have classes from me all day, but I would totally hang out with you guys in the crop room and just hang out like we should, just like having a Friday night live live. So one day I will be doing a event in Niagara on the Lake that is going to be a full on mixed media gel plate, the whole bit class that we can go and make art and do all of the things. So all of mine are attached, popped up flat. I'm going to trim my bottom off. I wish I could trim my bottom off. Oh yes, I love that Adele song. It's still playing, yet my earworm is going strong. Isn't that funny though? I'm working away and talking and I still am hearing music in my head. Sing, dance, and laugh. And Paula is my friend and she knows 100%. And a lot of us are doing this a whole healthful journey together. And Paula is one of the ladies doing Gina Livy with me. And all of us are having success, right? All of us who are doing the plan and so happy. I'm loving it. Her um, next program, their 12-week session. So if you're looking for something that you just want to get healthy and be in tune with your body, will start in January. So if you go to Gina, like spelt Gina, Livy, L-I-V-Y dot com or Gina Livy Weight Loss, uh, if you guys are looking for something after the holidays, I'll be in there if you want to come and play along. But, oh, see, Paula, loving it. I have so much energy, it's not even um, funny, right? So energetic, yeah. It's like, where has this been my whole life? I've done every single plan and uh, game changer. I could cry just thinking about it. So I got these pieces down, and then let's talk about what we're going to do to finish it. So see this right here, friends? I punched that out. There is a black piece of cardstock behind because I put the preserving memories on and I thought it got a little lost on the green. So the circle punch that I use for this is a two inch, okay? Two inch circle, right? Two inch black circle. Are you loving it, Catherine? I just, I'm telling you, I just, I can't even. I could cry with how good I feel. So I popped up the two inch black circle that I cut out of uh, cardstock in my on screen. You guys can see that, right? And then pop up preserving memories. Um, it is not a sticker. It's out of the ephemera pack. It's in the, there's a whole bunch of them in here. Okay. There's six different circles. Use whatever you want. Um, Cause you could customize and change these Guys, there's so much in uh, those ephemera packs. So popped up, popped up. And then I put the little notepad with the black pen. And then some of these, see how it pops up? I didn't pop it up, I just curl them. So before I put it down, I just put a little bit of a kink, a curl in it, curl the edges, but there is a popped up on that. But just on the corner, right? And then I put the stack of photos is popped up, a teal, or turquoise heart is popped up and then I put a yellow sprinkle heart in it and then you have your three rolls of doodle bug twine and I popped up the turquoise one and then down here put the envelope with the sticker handmade it's popped up the envelope is popped up and let's craft is popped up and then up the side, I just, I love to do this, just kind of a sprinkling of uh, embellishment. So there are hearts, buttons, and then a whole bunch of the mini pink uh, sprinkle hearts. The little pencil cup popped up at the top. And then this whole handmade title is popped up. And then see the little hearts down here? This is one of your ephemera, but I put 
one of the hearts from the sprinkles on top of all of them. I'm hoping you can see that. And then this is weekend is flat and just a piece of the uh, border sticker. So just a piece of it, okay? So I'll tell you how long it is. I cut it scallop to scallop, but it is about five inches. So a little bit better than five inches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 scallops, okay? Yeah, sure, you could glossy accent it. If you don't have those, you could put stickers down and glossy accent on top of all of them if you wanna do that. That's a great tip, okay? Um, there's not a retreat planned yet because that will be a big undertaking. I will need staff by then. I, I really need to hire somebody to help me. Uh, but it's hard because that person has to be in my house. So um, I just want to make sure that it's somebody that uh, works well with me and that can do the things that I'm not good at. <laughs> right? So that is it for this page, friends. Okay? And here, if you want to screenshot it, or freeze at this point just to see what you need. Am I centered in the shot? I think I am, right? Okay. I think, am I in the shot? There, I think, okay. So another one done. Well, not another one done. Another one explained. <laughs> I don't think you guys work that fast. All right. So let's work on this one. So you need this piece of paper and this piece of paper. So you can use whatever combination that you want. I just thought that this um, popped a lot or the most on the back of this page. So you want to cut this to 11 and a half inch square, okay? So I will cut this piece off first because it'll make a perfect banner with the hearts going the right way. So I'm going to cut the bottom off first and then the side. So 11 and a half by 11 and a half. But right now I have like a nice little border that I can use or <laughs> somebody can use. And then 11 and a half. And if you want to get really finicky, you could cut, if you wanted a quarter, I might do that. I'm going to cut a quarter inch off of each side only because then my, um, it finishes the same on each side. So I'm going to cut a quarter inch off of the um, right side and I'm going to cut a quarter inch off of the left side because I am crazy like that. And now my hearts finish the same on both sides if you want to do that, right? And then this will get centered on the plaid. If you want, you totally, and I'll do this for anybody who is um, buying this kit, but I will often go in if I'm only using a border and so I still can get a piece of the paper, I will just cut a square out of the middle of it and it doesn't have to be perfect, but just make sure you leave yourself enough that you can glue it down, right? And now this is perfect, could be for a card or whatever you wanna do. So I often um, will do this, especially in a class, cause now, right? And I didn't measure that if you notice, I just cut it. If it's 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half, whatever, just want it slightly smaller. I might have cut it smaller on my original. Yeah, it is a little bit smaller. Do whatever makes you happy. It still works, right? So if you want to cut some more of it off, go for it. This will work. So I'll just go with that. So I will put my tape down first here, close to where I cut, right? So it doesn't flap. 
and then I will put it on the edges, not in the middle, just on the edges of this sheet. There we go. And then I take that and just, oops, center it on your sheet because I cut this a little bit wider. I just have to make sure there's a border. There we go. Okay. I love borders around the edges. I need to have a drink. And I think somebody had said, right, too, with the eating plan is no bread and stuff, but I haven't really eaten bread or pasta for years. So um, for me, it's been a game changer is I just feel better. So now if I'm, or potatoes, I can't eat them either. They make me not feel good. Is um, now if I'm going to have it, it's just going to be the best piece of bread I've ever had. Like if I go somewhere and it's fresh Italian bread, uh, when I'm finished and I have hit where um, I feel comfortable, um, I would eat that. But I will never, ever eat pasta again. Just so you guys know, never again. It does not make me feel good. I don't miss it. Somebody said, what about my friend, my hairdresser? She said, what about gnocchi? And I'm like, yeah, maybe I'd have gnocchi, but I have four pieces and that's all I can eat. So for me, it's processed food has just changed. Um, so I don't miss it. So if you ask me and you say, do you miss bread? I'd say no. Sometimes a sub or a sandwich, but it has to be something I'd really love and I know I'm going to pay for it after. I will 100% pay for it that I have gut pain. But um, now it's only if I'm going to really enjoy it, right? So let's grab this piece, right, is our strip that goes here. I'm not going to glue it now, though, because for a layout like this, I would get to this point. I'd lay it down. I'd grab all my pieces, lay it all out, and then start to glue. Does that make sense? I would grab all of the pieces that I need, and I'm showing you guys right now. There's a lot of stuff on this layout. This, I think, was the last one I did, and I just used um, what I had left. Just use what I have left. So scrapbooking friends is going to be popped up. So I popped it up, and then I used the two pieces of the button um, bunting, or uh, what do you call that? I can't remember the word bunting or when you guys are going to tell me right <laughs> yay um and then all of the paints and some are behind and i curled them remember like i said i curl them banner garland thank you banner bunting or garland whatever you want to call it and then i put that on after i put the title so i could just place it so it's hidden there are three of the um sprinkles up there off of the other sprinkle page like I said your pot your paint some are on top some are behind and the ones on top are popped up and then on the bottom of the page is whatever you have left over that tells the story of when you're cropping with friends or if you don't want to do that right you can put whatever title you want on here um, but there are lots of pop dots so I just kind of placed it all in there and then just went and worked from one side over. But I have my typewriter, I have my scrapbook, I have my uh, ink pad and my ink blending tool. It's probably supposed to be a stamp, but that's what it is for me. My tape runner, my, um, what would that be? Ribbon, little thing of ribbon, my potato chips because it's my favorite snack in the whole world, uh, a bottle of of um, sequins, one of the twine rolls, and then filled it in with some buttons, some little Copic markers, and a cup of coffee or tea. Embroidery floss, yes, thank you. Thank you, I had a brain fart. So that's what I put on there, and then I put Hello Girls. But again, you could, like if you don't want this to be about cropping, and maybe it's just crafting, you just switch your title out to whatever you want, okay friends? 
So was that good? Can you see it? So you see what I'm talking about? There's tons of pop dots. And if I make the layout before I have photos, I just don't take the backing off of my pop dots until I slide my photo underneath it. So I just will put a pop dot on there, but I won't take the backing off so that I still can slide a photo under. So I always do that in a class. Okay. So like I said, all of this is out of your ephemera pack. It's going to be in one or the other, right? There's tons of title options. I freaking love these ephemera packs, right? So lots, lots, lots in there. So that's everything for this. And that's what I'm saying until I kept my pieces. To give you an idea for the bottom here, you need about, like that green piece is about three inches up from the bottom. So let's just tack it down. I have an itchy nose, I'm gonna kiss a fool. Hey Rich, <laughs> just joking. So you could put the white side down too if you wanted to, right? He's gonna come downstairs and go, did you need something? And I'll be like, no, I was, I was being not a, a brat. I was being a brat, honey. Okay, so about three inches from the bottom, if you do want to glue that down. There we go, okay. Very good. So let's set this aside. We have two layouts left, two. So my favorite piece of paper in the whole collection is this rainbow lined paper is everything. And I have to email tomorrow my friend Tanya and say, hey, do you still have, oh, I better keep that aside so I remember. Do you still have that paper? Because I'm going to order it. I love it. So that's your base. And this is the kind of thing, anytime you see line paper grids, buy extra of it because you don't have to only use this with Doodlebug. This would work with Color Study. This would work with... Uh, Paige Evans lines like whatever you have it totally will work so it's definitely worth investing in and let's find the layout this my friends right I love this page this page makes me super happy super happy and it's not it's just a bunch of layering of embellishment so what do you need you need those two mats that I lined up and um, this is what I do I'm going to show you so when I take that I only tack the middle right and then I put it about a half inch from the um, what is this called column a column what is the thing on the side of the page called I just forgot I haven't been in school for a long time um, and then it's just below the second dark pink line and kind of line that up that's called margin <laughs> look at you guys very quick thank you the margin um, and then there is a green line and I line this second one up right underneath the blue so see once you get that mat down and these mats are four and a half by three and a half so tack it in the middle I lined it up and then the second one comes right below the turquoise line. I love line paper because I can figure out exactly um, my positioning and then I just foam dot the corners. So I still have that playing with light and shadow but I don't have a lot of bulk on my layout and I would more than likely also pop up my photo. And I always, always, always print my photos with a white border, always. So when we talked about those photo apps that I use, I always will cut a white border around my photo because I love the look of a double mat without the extra work. So I think a white border will make your photo pop, especially if the colors don't match exactly. Um, it gives you a little bit of grace. Okay, so I didn't even take the backs off. Don't even care. It's going to go in a pocket page or a page protector. It doesn't even matter. And then what you have here is two pieces of washi tape layered. 
So you have your um, hearts and the rainbow that I layered. And then the remaining piece of the yellow border. See on this sticker sheet? That's the yellow border. You can use whatever you want. But remember, we cut the 13 scallop piece off of it. The remaining bit is what I layered on this layout. And here we go. So I took the hearts, the rainbow, and then the yellow piece. And because I'm extra like that, in the middle of all the hearts, I put the mini sprinkles, and I love it. It makes me super happy. These little hearts, I put all the way up the washi tape. So you have that little layer of texture, and they fit perfectly in the middle. And then on this side, all of this is out of your ephemera packs. So I put the glue bottle, the scissors, sweet all of them have pop dots on it. And then I love anything linear to put underneath a um, title. That's why you always see arrows, pencils, paint brushes, uh, anything that is long and linear, I love to layer when I'm doing um, my bits. So I have my scissors, my glue bottle, sweet, and the pencil. Here it says born to craft, and I put four of the little paint tubes some are flat, some are popped up, and then a little paintbrush. So my tip for success is freeze the video and start collecting the pieces, but don't glue anything down. Position and then start at the top and work your way down, right? Because then you know it all fits before you commit. It fits before you commit. And then it's born to craft, the little paintbrush. Look at the little paint set. I love it. Cute. Put that there two paint splats, another paintbrush, and then, or you could build from the bottom up, might even be better on this page. So it says, this is our story, it's a ruler, so our story is popped up, and then, oh, the rainbow of pencil crayons, I love it, and then some are popped up and some are not, right? I love it, okay? And then for your title on the bottom, it says crafting memories, I glued the bottom of it flat, I did pop up the top of it, and then memories is all popped up and then two brackets just because then it um, gives some weight to your title. And then at the top, I put the little fun sticker. Okay, so that is this page. You are going to so enjoy once you put your bones down and then start filling it in. So much fun. You have tons of fun. Um, still to go when you start adding all these bits. I love adding the jewelry and embellishing. So much fun, okay? So that is this page. And then finally, we have the other sheet of cardstock that I will trim. You guys, if you bought my kit, don't need to trim because I think that yours is basil and there is no, um, not basil, it's American Crafts, so there's no piece on it. So when I'm doing my basil one, I just line it up to 12 inches because this strip is longer. And I cut that off. And now I have my piece. And this is the layout we're doing, which is one of my favorites. They're all my favorites, but look it. I love it. So you see the yellows are different. But this one, um, whatever you have, right? Whatever you have, it's all good. So this is where I'm gonna go grab a piece of white cardstock because this is where you need to cut this because otherwise these would have just been floating in space. So to be able to layer a whole bunch of embellishments, I made fake Polaroids. So let me get up and grab some cardstock. And see if I have a piece of black handy. I think I do. Let me grab it. And we will cut it right now for you. Okay. 
So I rejigged my whole craft room and I have to say I'm super happy. I will have to share a walkthrough with you. So I have uh, all I, I think this is all I used. You might need two sheets of it, but it's what I have for now. So remember, I'm reminding you, the one thing you'll need for the other layout we did is a two inch black circle. So for whoever uh, wanted this kit, who bought it, when I go to my email, you will have your circle cut and ready. And then you need to cut for the white. You need a four by five, two four by fives. So I will cut five inches and then I can get two fours five inches and then two four inch by five inch mats okay if you like that I'm cutting right on top of my layout <laughs> so two four by fives that is going to be your base and then for the black pieces ruler is three and a half by four three and a half by four so I will cut a three and a half and then get my two mats out of it am I going to be able to get it I probably did that wrong but I think I will Three and a half by four. And then Polaroids have a wider piece at the bottom, right? So when you put that on, whoop, that is a problem. My trimmer blade is a little dull. So you, if you have a nail file, is perfect for this. I don't have one handy, so I just give it a haircut can't have that um, and that is the kind of crafter I am I would never expect it of you in my class but um, I am a perfectionist very much so it's a disease the other thing I love to do is shop for clothes <laughs> and I don't think Patty is here anymore she might be because she was just hanging out and journaling um, my friend Patty I send pictures of all the clothes that I buy And she's like, I thought you were going to stop. And I'm like, I can't do it. They keep tempting me with Facebook ads of things that I must have. So see when you put it on, it has about a quarter inch border and then a little bit more on the bottom. Okay, so let's go ahead and we will glue that down. So make sure you have an even border on the top and sides. And then the bottom is whatever's left over. Okay. Did you give the puppy some love, Irene? Are you enjoying that? Are you having to get up in the night? Does the puppy sleep with you? I would be bad like that. That dog would be in my bed. Once it's uh, old enough to do it, right? Because I'm sure at first you got to do all the proper training things. But my husband is very allergic. So we have not had pets. And Devin can't wait to leave so she can have a dog. What does she want? What is the one that kind of, I don't know, it has blue eyes. Some kind of, not a mountain dog. I don't know what. There's one dog she wants. Um, I'd say it's like a mid-size, maybe a little bit bigger. And it has like spots, an Australian Shepherd maybe, whatever looks like that. That's what Devon wants. And she went with her boyfriend to look at puppies. And if I was with her, I would have bought one and Rich would have had to move out. Because it they were absolutely beautiful. And the one she fell in love with and showed me the pictures and I was right there with her had two different colored eyes. So cute. You have an Aussie? Are they good dogs? Um, she's in your lap. Oh, I love that. 
She better have a lot of energy. She would be good because she is she is has a lot of energy, so she'll be good. So see, friends, I'm not going to stick them down, but see how fun that is already. And here's something: if the background's too plain for you, you could go in and I would tone on tone stamp on here with polka dots or something would be awesome. And then we still have these two mats. Oh, I love it, Carrie. So fun, super smart, but need lots of exercise. Yes, her boyfriend has one and its name is Blue. The dog's name is Blue and she loves it and the dog loves her. So she, now that's what she wants. So I, I put that one up here in this corner. So before I do anything, right, I would build these before I glue anything. But I just like to kind of position, right, where my stuff is going to fit. And then I would pull your title pieces, which is create happy. And then just kind of lay it out and commit last step, right? You have two. Oh, I love it. You have three Aussies, very energetic. And do they love each other? You, sorry, I missed the black mat size. It is a three and a half by four. Three and a half by four. And the white is a five by four. Okay, so when you guys go to put this together, don't glue anything down. This is how I work, right, is I will just grab my pieces and figure out how it's going to work. And then grab your title pieces, which is create happy. Create is all popped up. And then happy, I just kind of, see it's not attached, just so it pops up. And then I pop the Y up. And then now for your Polaroids, you need your pop thing where is he or she it doodle pop i love it doodle pop and then everything else is out of your ephemera packs so up in this corner i put picture perfect and then popped up um you brighten my day and then all of these word bubbles are popped up it says good times hello sweet a pink heart with of course because you know i like to do it the little uh, pink uh, sprinkle on it. I put three sprinkle hearts by the title. And then in the bottom one, it says, I love this. It has a little packet of photos, a camera, smile, say cheese, and then the little enamel heart. Right? Oh, you have with the different and the streaking. Oh. I want to come now and hug all of your um, your dogs. You got yours from an alpaca, up alpaca farm. Is Are they um, herders? Are they herding dogs? Do they do that? If they're herding dogs, do they herd you? I'm just curious because do they? Because I understand that herding dogs like will um, press into you, right? Push you towards their food and stuff. So I would love to know that. So this is the finished. I pop the corners of the Polaroids up and the photos are flat. The photo mats, did I? No, nope. I pop the corners of the photo mats up. So just the corners are popped and then these guys are popped up in the corners as well. Yes, one is, one is three and she has blue eyes. The other two are brother and sister are not quite one year old. Oh my goodness, you've got your hands full. Um, they were to protect the alpacas. They will herd the kids, but only if they run. Oh, I love it. Herding dogs. My older one herded my son when he was little. See, now Rich has to, we need to get him a small house, a tiny house. He can go live in the tiny house and then Devin and I will live in the house with the dogs. You have a blue healer uh, or used to ex-husband got him in the divorce. Uh, uh, and yes, he's a herding dog. Mm. and German Shepherds. We had German Shepherds growing up. We had German Shepherds growing up, but no pets since we got married because he says I like to be able to breathe in my house, which I understand, right? He likes to herd the rumba. <laughs> Love that. Okay, friends, any questions? Any questions? I hope that you guys can see that. But again, I love it. We have lots left over. When you are done, if you bought my kit or you bought everything that I listed, you will have, like one of the questions was like, should we have three pieces of paper left over? Yes, 
You have this, because to me, I'd be cutting that into border strips. This is great for making cards or embellishments. And then look at the back as a beautiful floral. And then these are so much fun. Look at, you could make a mini book out of this. You could make a mini book out of your scraps, like a tag flip book. How fun would that be? I love this paper, but I love anything with words on it. You would know that from any collection I've ever done has words in it. And then you have your three by four cut aparts. Crafting with a chance of chocolate. Yes, ma'am. And then the other side is a floral. So yes, these three are still left over. And then for embellishments, because we never went through, this is the stuff that I used, okay? We have three rolls of washi tape because I couldn't just pick one. I love them. And they are called You Make Me Happy, Rainbow Bright, and Rainbow Hearts. We know that there's a doodle pop. And then you have your two ephemera packs. The chit chat, which is like your words and titles and then odds and ends, which are your icons. 187 pieces and 85 pieces. And then our sticker book, what we knew, this, the mini stickers. Yes, Queen Elizabeth is our queen in Canada. Yeah, we are part of the Commonwealth. Okay, and then these are the three sprinkles that um, I used. I love them. I would buy a ton of these. Like I literally have 10 packs of that because you can never go wrong in in different color families. I laugh because when we're doing embellishments, I'll say stars, hearts, stars, hearts. I love it. And a lot of times they will be like, but we did hearts last time. I'm like, I understand that, but they're a different color and people will buy them. The first thing that sells out in a lot of collections are these because you can use them on cards. You can use it in your traveler's notebook. You could use it if you journal. You could use it if you are a planner and you can use it to scrapbook. So I always find um, that these are awesome. Uh, Trudeau is our prime minister. So the queen is just a figurehead. Trudeau is like our president, our prime minister. So he's the one who is in charge, right? And yes, a governor general who stands in for her. But again, I don't know if they do anything other than photo ops and I'm not sure. But I am not the one to ask about politics. That's all I know, <laughs> right? So that is what you need. And I'm gonna show you the layouts again. So um, at this point, you should have all your pieces done. And now is the fun, you go embellish. You print your photos off. I love it. So we have that one we did. There's this one. That This is all we have right now. Unless you guys have done more. Because some of you might have just kept working, right? Some of you would have gathered your pieces. We have this one. Right? We have the extra piece that we cut that you can use for bonus projects. Or some of you, because you love your double pagers, you might make some double pages out of some of this stuff. We have this one, right, where we put our pieces down. And that's where the black goes, so I'm just going to tuck it. Right, that was the two inch black circle. And we have our pocket page. Just whoever buys this kit will not have a pocket page in it because I don't have any four by four pocket pages left, okay? So it's the one thing that you will have to um, find yourself is the pocket page. But that is one side of our pocket page and the other side of the pocket page. And then our mixed media bit that we did. So we have the mats, and then you have to go and stickify it. Again, don't forget, I would add glue. Do not trust 
just use your glue pen or your connect glue and glue all of the stickers down because they are popping up on mine, right? They're popping mine, popping up on mine. Question, what is your email again? I have dictated notes for today's class for you. I will send for you to do whatever. Or even just go share them, Kristen, on... Uh, on uh, the community page, right? If you send them to me, I'm not gonna lie, I have to go and kit and do all of the other things and I appreciate that and think people will love it. Just go share it on uh, our group page. That is the best thing to do because then I don't have to, because I'll forget to share it, right? And then you'll be like, dude, I sent that stuff to you and I'll be like, dude, I have 70 million emails to go through and people must hate me because it's one Vicky doing all the things. And that's one thing I'll tell you that takes a hit is because I have four different places people send me messages on. Another thing, if you are ever on Facebook and you send me Facebook Messenger messages and I do not even look at them because it has to be one place that I don't, I, I don't take messages there, okay? So don't think, if you've messaged me there and you think I'm ignoring you, I literally don't open it because uh, it's too much. And I find Gmail is almost a nightmare to usually to um, manage my uh, email, okay? So if you ever uh, email me and you haven't heard from me, email me again is never, especially if it's something like, say with warm wishes and we had an arrangement that we talked about in June, imagine like five months later how many emails I've got. So it is never a bad idea to say, hey, don't forget that I ordered that washi tape that you were going to throw in with the warm wishes kit because there were so many kits to get out. And with all the hiccups that I had, I just mailed them out. And I knew like two people have emailed me and said, you, you miss the washi, which I knew was going to happen. And I'm like, no, no problem. I'll just pop it in the mail. But whenever, um, yes, you have full on permission. I love it. Thank you very much, Kristen. Uh, that, um, uh, it's I have one person doing all the things. And so moving forward, now I have some things that I think are going to help me. But uh, sometimes I'm just hot mess express, right? Going through all of the things. So I'm going to flip the camera around and we can have a little chit chat. And I am going to go upstairs right now and photograph all of this and add it to my regular Vicki Booten artist page. And I will also add it in a post on the Vicki Booten creative community. So if you want to go and grab those images and print them off, you totally can do that. Totally can do that. So let me flip the camera around. And thank you very much, my friend Natalie, for helping out. You, you are the best. You really are. So I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did making them. And of course, how much I enjoyed spending some time with you guys. Uh, that was fun, right? Like I decided to do this because I loved this collection and I knew I wasn't going to do it as a full on class. Although look at, I just spent all the time it could have been, but watch in next year moving forward. If I'm going to be randomly doing this, it's going to be random. Like, Oh my goodness, the co this collection just came out and I absolutely love it. Um, and I usually will do a poll and say, hey, how many of you are interested in it? Which is what I did for this one. And there were probably 100 people interested in it. Um, and then so I bought what I could. And I think that was like 75 kits was all I could get because it was all sold out. And then they sat in my store and, and only a couple people bought them. And then when I had time to finally make the project and I went doodle bug is done and I'm going to do that class online with it. And then you guys can buy your own product or you bought the kit and they were gone literally in um, like minutes, all those kits. So just know moving forward, if you like one, if you love the collection two that I'm using and I haven't made samples yet, this probably will show you that I would say it's a 99 0.999% chance you're if you already like what I do and you already like the color or the theme buy the kit because then I had tons of people emailing me so mad that they couldn't get the kit and I'm like they sat in my shop for a month and nobody bought them and then when this when the samples were done they were gone 
So just know that there could be lots of things coming where it's not a kit and I'm just like, hey, let's just craft it on a Sunday. This, this is the product I'm gonna use and then I just make with you guys. Or it will be like that I do the kit. If you're new here, I do tons of online classes. So just check out vickybooten.com. It doesn't hurt to sign up for the newsletter, making sure that I have no control over if your email provider will allow newsletters to come through. But it's always a good idea to be a member in the creative Vicky Boot and Creative Community Group page on Facebook. Even if you're not a Facebook user, I will do a lot of my classes through Facebook because it's just easy. So you don't have to go on and start commenting or anything. But even if you sign up for a Facebook account just to be able to access those things. Um, but it's a lot of fun. And, you know, this has been a game changer and a lifesaver for me and a lot of you guys for um for during covid times like uh, this community grew by like tenfold because a lot of people we were forced at home and then we needed something that was like a mental break and if you're like me like a social connection right and i hope that now as the world starts opening up and we go back to normal that you still check in and hang out because I feel like it's a loss of friends when I don't see you guys that I've saw for so long. So just make sure you still pop in and say hello. If you're watching after the fact, all of the info's here. I hope you enjoy this. I had a lot of fun. And if you have any questions, let me know. And again, huge thanks to Natalie and a humongous thanks to all of you guys who uh, took the time to join me today. And I hope you enjoyed that. I love this collection, Doodlebug. You knocked it out of the park. And um, any questions, I won't just shut down like that. I, I hope I don't just uh, shut down like that. I didn't even look. Is do, Did I miss anything? Say it right now, because I can't see. I can see it up on my phone. Um, If you have, oh yes, thank you, Michelle. Don't forget to thumbs up the video. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. Um, and after the fact, please, so I don't look like nobody uh, is talking to me, when I say goodbye and it's not live anymore, please leave some kind of comment of that you were here, where you're watching from, and just some kind of tidbit you wanna share from today in the regular comment section would be super happy. Hi, Karen, I was wondering if you were here. Uh, and again, sorry that the um, tool list and everything came so late for this one, but it's just, it's what my life is like. There's so, I have so many irons in the fire. Uh, and one person doing it all that um, sometimes it is not done as well as I would like it to do uh, or be done. But I'm always, yeah, trying my best. I'm always trying my best. So um, thank you. Thank you guys all. And yes, definitely rewatch, pause on the videos and uh, check out on those two spots on Facebook. And I will share. And I'll share it too on vickybooten.com on the blog. So if you look at the top banner of vickybooten.com, there's a section that says blog. I'll post them there and I'm gonna go do it all right now. So it'll probably take me about 30 minutes and I'll post those as well. Thank you so much, guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day, whatever day it is in your part of the world or whatever time. And um, I will see you for sure on Friday Night Live and we're gonna do our part two of the backgrounds that we made this week. So have a great time. Uh, great weekend uh, and finish those pages and share. I'd love to see what you're making and we'll see you guys later. I always have to remember how to shut this off. See you guys.